powerful song, powerful song. This can't be it. Go ahead and pray in the spirit in one minute. This can't be it. God is so much, so much bigger. What we've heard so far cannot be all of it. And you pray and tell him, visit me tonight. Visit me in a mighty way. Go ahead and pray. You are still praying. Say, Lord, this can't be it. You are so much bigger than this. conscious of the fact that what you see is not all there is in God. Can you tell somebody there is more? There is more. But, but you see that more is for those who can press. That more is for those who can press. I'd like you to pray in one minute and say Lord I came with a hunger tonight. Please make sure you are praying. I came with a hunger tonight. I came with a hunger tonight. She pack a lot of another book. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. My love. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Belongs to you. This is not a special number tonight. Let it be a communication from the depths of your spirit. Yeah. Belongs to you. Can we all sing it one more time again? My heart. My heart. My mind. My soul. to you our hearts and everything we do tonight in this place belongs to you are you ready to sing now the songs that we sing the song we sing it all belongs to Belongs to you. Belongs to you. 
tonight that my heart belongs to you belongs to you it belongs to you belongs to you It belongs to you. Shenanamos. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. It belongs to you. Yeah. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. Make sure you're just talking to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I love it when we sing songs that declare how helpless we are in the face of His Majesty. These are deep spiritual songs. The Bible says, He that cometh unto God must believe that He is. If you do not believe that He is, then you will not experience His dimension. As a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Greet 20 people. Just give them a big hug. And return back to your seat. God bless you. You raise me up so I can stand on You raise me up to walk on stormy sea. And I am strong. Please be seated. God bless you. We have a lot to do this night.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I saw my younger brother in this place. Celebrate him. Come on, wave your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Now, tonight is a very serious night. Say it's a very serious night. So just laugh with your neighbor for the last time and let me have your full attention for the rest of this night. Yeah, I mean it. Say, neighbor, if I don't laugh with you again, don't be sad. It's just the nature of the night. <laughs> you better laugh. Stretch it now while it lasts. Hallelujah. What is it with this insect in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Ta da da, ta da da, ta da da, ta da da. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we've been we've been discussing a series on family life. Those outside, can you hear me? Say praise the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, follow tonight. I prayed and I prayed and I said, God, do something remarkable in this place. Hallelujah. Look up, please. There are seven mountains. Remember our series on the kingdom. There are seven mountains that I believe that God is raising and anointing the body of Christ to occupy, to take over, and to legislate on behalf of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mountain number one is the business and economic world. God wants men to conquer that mountain. Mountain number two, politics and governance. God is seeking for men who have an understanding of the spirit. Men after the order of Daniel who can legislate on behalf of territories and speak the counsel of God in our social environment. Mountain number three, family life. Family life is becoming a mess. Every arm robber was born by a woman, true or false. Every thief and tout that is threatening the society was born by a woman. So it's important that the life and the glory of God be taken to that, that area. Hallelujah. Mountain number four, education. Education. The value system of the kingdom must be taken. Education is so important because that is the principle of of sustainability when you educate people you mentor them you train them you build them it brings about continuity <clears throat> hallelujah what's mountain number five the arts and entertainment arts and entertainment very very important we have a lot of musicians we have a lot of Footballers, movie actors, celebrities who can influence an entire territory just with one movie, one song, one rap and so on and so forth. So we need to take God and his value systems there. Mountain number what now? Six, the media. Any man can buy airtime and say anything whether for or against God. We've had people speak against God directly. What's the last mountain? Huh? How can it be sports? Religion. A mountain of religion. We have several kinds of religions and 
All of their leaders and founders have a say and they have an influence over people. So we need to invade that mountain. Let's review the mountains very quickly again. Number one, business. We, we are tired of poor and broke churches, poor and broke Christians, poor and broke people. Hallelujah. We are tired of unbelievers controlling the wealth and the finances and allowing a few people to just scrounge for resources. It's not of God. It's devilish. More sinners will go to hell as a result of poverty than lack of preachers. Hallelujah. Second mountain. Sorry? Politics and governance. Someone can sit down and legislate that land should not be sold for church building again. Is that true? No matter how anointed you are, you will suffer from that legislation. Recently, the gay movement was tested a bit in our senate i thank god because there is a level of decorum we have hallelujah our national assembly has not derailed from the value of the kingdom that much and so they just kicked it out at once there are countries today that they have passed certain bills into law and they did not call any preacher or pastoral association for their consultation so two people can decide to get married. Listen carefully. A man and a man. And they can choose the church they want to join them. And as a pastor, if you don't join them, they will withdraw your license. Sue you, lock up your church, pack up everything. Hallelujah. This is very disastrous. So we need men who have the fear of God. Men who understand the values of the kingdom to invade our government. Hallelujah. The Ten Commandments is not kicked out by herbalists. It's kicked out by parliament people. People who sit down and legislate on behalf of the kingdom. We can keep praying in tongues and throwing ourselves up and down. But so long as there are people who are legislating things that are not consistent with the will of God. It's terrible. In China, you cannot have more than a child now. One is okay. Praise God. It's terrible. They carry out free abortions before they pay women's salary. If by any reason, whether knowingly or unknowingly, your husband gets you pregnant, you are in for it. What did I say? Whether knowingly or unknowingly. That is none of their business. You have one child, that's enough. Because they are trying to control whatever they want to control. It's terrible. So we need people there. Number three. Family life. How many of you agree with me that family life is in a mess right now? It needs a reordering. Hallelujah. The boundaries that have been kept have been taken away. We do not even know where the boundaries are again. And this is why this series is important. But let's just review the other mountains. You can get all of this in our teachings on the kingdom. The fourth mountain. Education. Very important. For as long as we keep teaching people. You know, I told you one of our dreams is by the time God gives us an opportunity, we are going to build a school, a world-class school. I've shared it with the leaders. We will build a school and there are three courses we are going to add to the curriculum. One is called Spiritual Growth, Financial Education and Koinonia. These are three courses that our students must offer. Hallelujah. For you to write Waeg, they say you must pass mass and English. For us, you must pass mass, English, financial education, and spiritual growth. Yeah. We keep raising intellectuals who have no fear and no knowledge of God. And their knowledge makes them fools. The Bible says there were two trees in the garden. One, the tree of life. The other, the tree that brings the knowledge of both good and evil. Hallelujah. The fifth mountain. Arts and entertainment, very important. Hallelujah. Some of you are gifted and skilled fashion designers, beauticians, and so on and so forth. We need people to carry the value system. We don't want the world teaching us how to dress, coming with every kind of junk and everything. We don't want the world controlling us. Let the best footballers be tongue-talking Christians. Let the best golfers be tongue-talking Christians. 
who can say no to every Jezebel that wants to come and throw down their destiny. Hallelujah. We need to take the value system of the kingdom. Mountain number six, the media. I look forward to times when we will not just own. See, I truly believe that during our time, owning a television station will be like owning a handset. Hallelujah. We are talking about satellites. We are not talking about television stations. Hallelujah. Owning satellites and we pay for the bill for decades ahead of time. We can do anything we want to do. Nobody comes to tell us what to put on air or what to take out of air, how to culture and edit our words. When you are listening to Christian programs and someone says a vulgar word, they have ways of canceling it. There are other programs that when you are mentioning the things of God, they cancel it the same way. That is nonsense. Can't stand begging the government for permission and airtime, and they give us five minutes and ten minutes. If we want to worship for the whole day, let's have it. Thank God for the ministries that have television stations. It's a breath of fresh air in this wild jungle of Babylon where everything can just be posted online. Hallelujah. Then the last mountain is the mountain of religion. Religion has caused more harm to the body. It's all kinds of things. We need men who will rise up. This is where you talk about the fivefold authentic Christianity. And I'm glad to announce to you that Nigeria will present the true portrait of apostolic Christianity to the world. Yeah, this is true. Hallelujah. The mantle left UK in the days of Smith Wigglesworth and went down to America and they merchandised it by their intercourse with Babylon and it left to Asia and now it's returned to Africa. We will show the world the true portrait of what true apostolic Christianity is. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So today we are going to consider one of the mountains, family life. Pastor Jake started it. How many of you were blessed? Celebrate him. May God cause men to celebrate you just the way you did. Selfish people. Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'm just joking. You're not selfish people. You're spirit-filled champions and generals on your way to tear down the walls of evil. Hallelujah. So, now, please understand this. We are going to be very comprehensive in this series. We are not just talking about, for many people, when they just talk about um, relationship, the circumference of our dealing is just a guy, a lady, how they should get into a relationship and they stop there. Uh -uh. The journey starts from knowing yourself down till fatherhood, raising children, and that's why it's called family life. It's not called relationship series, right? Family life. So it's a journey. Praise the Lord. I want you to listen because the Lord told me he will answer a lot of questions tonight. And I know a few people, I hope they are here. I told them to be here. Who sent me a lot of questions, you know, about several confusions that they've had along this area. And I told them, look, just come for the program. God bless you. Pastor Jake started by talking about a godly relationship and... We want to bring believers into an understanding of the biblical principles that govern godly relationships and family life. Everybody say after me, I'm a Christian. That means I'm a child of God. That means I'm not of the world. That means I have the value system of the kingdom. Yeah, that's true. You have the value system of the kingdom. You are not of the world. You cannot afford to do things... The way people are just doing it. And it's very sad. Please look up. It's very sad. Over 90% of us in this place have learned everything we learned about relationship and family life. Either from media or our friends or our bitter experiences. Hallelujah. There are few ministries that pay the price to talk about family life and the principles of godly relationships. And you see, what you don't teach people, when you don't teach people certain principles, they learn just anything that comes. Is that correct? There are pastors that castigate and condemn people and get angry at their members. 
because they don't seem to be excelling in this area but then they will not teach the truth the bible says faith comes by hearing when when adam said the lord the bible says in in genesis 3 it says and he had the voice of god walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where are thou adam said i had your voice but i hid why because i was naked and god said who told you in other words that's an information you got from somewhere so everything you have today that constitutes your mindset was told you by somebody the bible says paul speaking he says there are as it were many voices in the earth and none of them are without effect so we're going to be considering a lot of things this is a very life transforming series and i want you to pay your rapt attention hallelujah there are many people who were taught nothing about love nothing about relationship nothing about sex nothing about marriage nothing about the dignity of keeping yourself they just our parents just hoped that we'll find the truth hallelujah that has resulted to bitter casualty in the lives of many people but tonight the lord brings light in the name of jesus very important and the church that is supposed to be an apostolic molding place the potter's house where men are built and fashioned they've either shied away from it and are not ready to take responsibility in that area and teach and train the people because we have this demonic teaching that these kinds of teaching should not be taught in church we have this religious spirit is that true there are churches that would dare not talk about things like this they feel all that there is in the life of someone is just teach people how to be built spiritually how to pray in tongues how to love god but those people who enter a relationship is that true while they are praying the guy sees the lady and likes her now he doesn't know how to manage what is happening to him or the guy wants to get married and all he has been taught to do is pray in tongues and see visions in the realm of the spirit and fall under the anointing and he does not know how to help himself there are many anointed children in the body of christ we are only sophisticated when it comes to spiritual things but when it comes to the wisdom of living in our social environment many christians are dull of understanding is that true many christians live like fools in their social environment because we lack the wisdom So you see an unbeliever who does not know God, doesn't respect the ways of God, but has a lot of wisdom when it comes to living in life. Wisdom for life. Many church folks lack this. Hallelujah. That's why you can see, for instance, unbelieving ladies. You never see a guy who just gets up like that and comes to them. But every time you want to see nonsense that happens is Christian girls any man that feels is emotionally troubled and he just wants to sleep around with any lady they know how to find christian girls hallelujah and that's not because the christian girls are bad that's because we the preachers who should build and help them and teach them the truth are being irresponsible all of us let me tell you something never pray for a crowd or for membership if you cannot teach and train the people are you listening to me you have no business having people in your congregation if you are not ready to build them praise the lord and by the grace of god it's our goal to build people holistically so sometimes you see us teach on character and it looks as if that is all there is in god then we teach about the principles of the spirit and the anointing we teach on finance we teach on purpose the kingdom destiny it's important to touch on every aspect so that we will have believers that are built and fashioned if you believe that say amen, amen. right so um pastor jake started with the basics of relationship please let's run through it i have a lot to cover tonight and i trust god for grace in jesus name hallelujah the first thing Pastor Jake started telling us, and everybody I want you to look up, inside and outside. Listen to me, lift your hands everybody. Say, I receive the spirit of meekness. Say one more time, I receive the spirit of meekness. 
I humble myself to hear, to understand, to receive, and to learn. Pride is a, is a killer. There are many people who because of pride and arrogance will not listen. Many people will believe they know what they are doing. Just listen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The first thing we need to define is the concept of love. Pastor Jake said that very extensively. I will run through it. One of the biggest challenges. Please let me have one guy and one lady here quickly. One here, one here. Anybody? Taiwo, quickly. Please appreciate them. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I want you to know that a man is not another woman. Every lady say that a man is not another woman. Ladies say woman is not another man. Very important. The concept of love from the perspective of a man is far different from love. what love is for a woman. Are you following me now? The Bible says that when God brought man into being, all that was man's focus was purpose, destiny, are you following me now? And honor and authority. Man was conscious of his place, the honor, the authority, and everything God has given him. And so very quickly, I want to go very straight to the point. Every time you talk of love from a man's perspective, it means two things. Number one, honor. Number two, respect. Everybody say, love for a man means, number one, number two, no matter how you claim or think you are loving a man, if that concept of love does not translate to genuine honor or respect, you have not loved the man by his definition. Are you following me now? Very important. Ladies, understand this. When it comes to dealing with a man, men can kill because of respect. Are you listening to me? Men can kill you call somebody mister when you should call him chief he can sue you he can make sure you die for that statement is that true men can kill you call somebody a pastor who you should call a reverend or a reverend who you should call a bishop or a brother who you should call an apostle or prophet or whatever he can kill you for it sister your beauty can fade at once like a leaf if you disrespect a brother are you listening to me Oh, it's, it's not about ego. Ladies think it's ego. It's, it's our configuration by design. You will never get the best of a man if you do not understand what love means from the perspective of the man. So what does love mean, sisters? Honor and respect. What does it mean to honor? To hold in high esteem. To hold in high esteem. As we explore this, you will know the reason why some relationships will never work and some homes will never come together. It doesn't matter what kind of message is preached. It's not just about Satan and demons. Let's get the fundamental thing straight. So love means respect and honor. When you respect the guy, you respect his assignment, you respect his call, you respect his purpose. That's the circumference of what love means for a guy. Very important. It was on account, listen to me ladies, never forget this. Never forget this. Your primary ministry or a fixed ministry that God has put for every lady is to be a help meet for the man. So it doesn't matter what crusades you have to do in the future. It was the first mention of a woman was to be able to help the man in his assignment is that true the bible says and god said it is not good for the man i have created and given an assignment to be alone it is not good he said and i will make a help meet a help suitable ladies say i'm a help suitable say it with confidence i'm a help suitable because there are some of you that have gone through things in life that have abused this statement. You feel that you are not a help to somebody. We'll talk about that. You are a help suitable. 
And the Bible says, her desire shall be to her husband. Her desire shall be to her husband. So, when you love the man, you respect him, you honor him. Sarah called Abraham Lord. It's not a sign of worship. The word Lord means there, I esteem you. There is a beautiful position that God has given a man and a woman. And ladies, hear me, this is very important. Because there is a satanic movement trying to awaken women, in quote, to their rightful place. And while that has worked well, it has crossed the boundary. Are you following me now? Where ladies believe that they can be a man. Ladies believe they can be everything. There are all kinds of foundations rising up, orchestrated by demons that are bringing ladies into rebellion against their husbands and in the home. And they think, let me tell you something, your respect for the man, especially when you get married, is not just a function of his ability to provide a loan. While that is true, if your respect for the man is tied just because of his ability to provide, you are violating scripture. Because agape is love without conditions. It is a position that God has put you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? We have to rush. Now we come to the world of the ladies. Guys, listen very carefully. Love does not mean purpose for the lady. Get it very clearly. Visionless brothers, destiny shaking men of God, I announce to you that love for the lady has nothing to do with your destiny. Carry your destiny and your crusades and your one million salvation target and pack it away when you are talking about love from the sister's perspective. Sisters, if I'm talking, can you say amen? Because some of you have been trying to tell the guy, you are so happy that he seated near you now. You say, oh God, let him say it. God has answered your prayer already. Hallelujah. You see, because of the fragile nature, the fragile nature of the lady and her emotional configuration. Did you know that the emotional configuration of a lady was designed on purpose? Are you following me now? There are some of you ladies, you are trying to make yourselves become men. Stop it! Two men cannot live in the same home. Hallelujah. God designed this side of you to be able to compliment the man. Some ladies are as hard as a rock. As hard as a rock. It's not a gift to your husband. No, it's not a gift. No man that I know would cherish that. I'm not talking of, I mean, being strong and stable. I'm talking of being hard, insensitive, emotionless. You are a man. You are not a woman. A woman was not designed that way. A woman was designed to respond. A man was designed to absorb. A woman will respond. Are you learning something? Those outside, if you are following me, say amen. Hallelujah. So, love for a lady means, number one, it means attention. All guys say attention. attention. Say it, attention. attention. In fact, let me say it the way I say it all the time. Maximum care and attention. Write it. <laughs> Those who are guilty are laughing. Maximum what? It's like a graph. You know that song? Nothing, no place. You must gauge that tape. Ladies will stretch you until they see the highest of the attention. Listen, let me tell you something, guys. Attention for a lady is almost like purpose for you. When you do not give a lady attention, and now we are going to define what we mean. Because this word is falling on different soils. We need to redefine it. Hallelujah. It means care. Everybody say care. You must be caring. To be caring means to be sensitive to needs. To be concerned. It means time. Everybody say time. Very important. Time. 
it means affection affection this is an emotional bonding not sex emotional bonding for god's sake emotional bonding if you want to be a priest go to the seminary if you want to get into a relationship open your heart and allow that emotional dimension to find expression in every relationship praise the lord so for the guy what's the difference now that does not mean listen please understand this that does not mean these other qualities i mentioned in the lady are not appreciated in the life of the man are you following me now but according to the order of priority so if if you're going out with taiwo now and you meet and you say taiwo do you know what the lord is doing in our midst how was that meeting and Taiwo is looking at you. She's smiling because she's trying to respect you. But I assure you, she's not hearing what you are saying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Guaranteed, she's not hearing what you are saying. You ate her food, licked the plate. You didn't even say whether the food is nice or not. This lady took out time, bought these heels. How many of you have seen these heels? Brothers, don't tell lies. If you appreciate it, clap for her, Jare. And you just come with your anointing that has blinded your eyes. And all you see is souls, even on your wife who is already saved. Ladies, tell the brothers, change. Shout it again, change. Ah, you are in for a shock this night. We've not started though. Hallelujah. So look up please, we have a lot to cover respect and honor there are many of you ladies you are so rude hostile you wonder why no guy comes around you because they see themselves every time they see you disrespectful you are rude cruel you don't talk to anybody with respect that's how i am No brother wants to mortgage his prophetic destiny for that kind of wife. Is that true, brothers? Let me tell you something. Don't you think prayers is covering the eyes of the brothers? They are watching. Oh yes, they are watching. The Bible says, be wise like serpents. The brothers are watching. They are watching you as you are doing this, this manly thing you are doing. No respect you are just shouting at the guy and somebody that has been trusting god just says lord thank you for answering my prayers i've i've received from you every man is looking for a woman who will compliment him ladies i want to give you a big shocker right now there's no man that i know who is looking for a preacher everybody is looking for a woman who can be a wife to him He's already a preacher. He doesn't need another one. <laughs> Ladies have this funny thing that they, you feel the more you are entering the anointing, the more attractive you are becoming for the guy. It's such a big mistake. The guy is looking at his children. He already knows he's busy. You are busy just like him. The guy is looking at who can help, who can cook at home. You're already going for five crusades in a week. He won't marry you. He doesn't want to die for nothing. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? That's why we have a welfare department to help us. We can fast happily. Why? There is a consolation. Imagine if all we have is prayer ban. We're in trouble as the ministers. Hallelujah. Please appreciate both of them. God bless you. So we have to get it clear. Love is very, very important. When the concept of love is not defined from the kingdom perspective, there is going to be chaos and anarchy. Hallelujah. Have you seen a lady look at a guy? Guys, when the lady comes to you and says you are selfish, ah, me, selfish, I'm providing money, I'm paying the children's school fees. 
Hallelujah. And the lady is saying you are selfish. And you are now wondering, is it that I'm not purpose driven? Am I not praying enough? What she's saying is, you are not defining love from my perspective. Are you following me now? Very important. Now before we start, Pastor Jake spoke about it here, but let me define certain things. The qualities that a guy must have before you think of entering a relationship and a lady. We have to talk about that quickly. There are qualities. Listen. Please look up. If these qualities are not in you, and you have been dreaming of asking a lady out in this place. You better wake up from that dream. Wake up in Jesus name. The Bible says arise. Thou that sleepest. And let Christ give you light. So wake up tonight and listen. There are many brothers that think. Because you are macho. And broad chested. And tall dark and handsome. It just means that every lady is standing desperate like a leaf. Better repent of your pride and listen to these qualities that we have to explain. Is anybody following me tonight? I already told you to laugh from the beginning. Look up, please. The Bible says for us to have no business with the unfruitful work of darkness. Before you even consider a relationship or marriage with anybody, let me tell you something. That person must be genuinely born again. Write it. This is not part of the quality. This is what even qualifies you to begin to look at other qualities. Must be born again. We live in a generation where ladies are becoming the Holy Spirit. Who have the exclusive ability to change any Romeo they like. Let me tell you something. Come out of what you watched in that Nigerian film. Don't get up and go and yoke. See, look up. Every lady, every true godly lady must submit herself to the man. The only choice you have is to choose the kind of head you submit to. Hallelujah. Don't choose any kind of head that will come and kill you. He must be born again. What does it mean to be born again? To submit to the governing authority of Christ. The governing authority of the word. A man that does not submit to the word of God can kill you. There is nothing to give him boundaries. There is nothing to define the terms of his relationship or marriage with you. There is nothing to convict him. You can't afford to go out with a man who is not born again. There are many of us, it's those that are not born again that you like. You say they are nicer than the brothers. But they will take you to hell. And you won't see any of the brothers in hell. We are all going to heaven. Hallelujah. Say he must be born again. Guys say she must be born again. Every lady. That threw every great man in the Bible and in history were nice and beautiful ladies. Most of them did not have respect for the things of God. Hallelujah. If you marry a lady that is not born again and is not serious with God, some of you say, uh-uh, but the guy is nice. Say that day Pastor Jakes even saw him. Didn't he greet you, sir? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, I'm answering a lot of questions here. Do not confuse morality with the presence of the Holy Spirit in a man. Are you listening to me? Willpower can only take you so far. You do not know the power of, I mean, Satan and demons outside of the word of God. When you know that, you will know that morality is not enough. See, let me tell you something. You can get a course you don't like for five years. You can struggle it, wrestle it, complain about it and just finish. But when you get married, after 40 years, that man will change and wreck your life. And you will wish you were dead. Some of you, that's the case in your families. Now you have an opportunity to choose. Hallelujah. So are you ready now? 
Now, there are certain qualities that a Christian brother should have. We're, we're not talking about marriage yet. We're talking about relationships now. So every brother, every Christian brother or Christian sister that desires a godly relationship, we expect you to be building yourselves or to have built yourselves in this area. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, look up. I know that if I'm to call two or three ladies now, we don't have the time and ask you, what kind of man do you want? You first smile and say, hey. Hallelujah. You just carry your handbag. It's already written there. Because you've been praying about it. You bring out your hundred point agenda list. The guy must have the ability to carve his eyebrows. He must understand about nail filing and the rest. We don't want a brother with oil on his face as if they fried egg on the face. He must be posh and clean. Oh, you think we don't know? <laughs> Hallelujah. I like a brother that will do this, do that, do that. You want a brother that is exposed. Don't want anybody who will be disgracing you in the public. Praise God. You go to a restaurant before they see anything. They've not even prayed. They have started disgracing you. He thinks he's in his room. Now you are embarrassed. Ladies have a lot of things. But let me tell you tonight. Look up please. All those things will not work. Period. Did you hear me? All those things will what? Because even you, you are not prepared for that kind of man. The only man that fits all those qualities you are writing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not looking for a wife. <laughs> but he has made us his ambassadors. Are you listening to me? You cannot say, oh, this guy must... Be. There are ladies who are so meticulous... Say, if I look at his skin, it must be fresh and this. Let me not see any funny thing. It must be without blemish. No, the lamb that will be slain. Listen, it's not wrong. It's just childish. You wrote it when you were in secondary school. Now you came to the university. Tear it. You are growing. That's, that's just the remedy. What you need is not deliverance. It's just growth. The Bible says, when I was a child, you were writing that when you were trying to keep yourself busy to write SSC. This is almost 10 years now. Tear that thing. Grow up. Face a real world like a woman and a man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are certain virtues, Pastor Jakes called them, and I'll write it, cardinal virtues. That means there are some virtues that eventually they will develop themselves. Listen, ladies, look at me. If you are looking for a perfect man, you have no ministry in the life of that man. Are you listening to me? The purpose of the lady is to complete the man. To help his inadequacy. So if you are looking for a man who is already perfect, you don't have a ministry in the life of that man. Praise the Lord. Mm. Are you getting blessed? Alright ladies, what qualities should you look for in, in the guy? And guys, these are the qualities you should be building yourself in. Number one, honesty and sincerity. Quality number one. Any guy coming around your life who is not honest and sincere, pack your load and run. Don't pray about it. I'm already telling you the answer. Run. Honesty and sincerity. The brother must be honest must be sincere you can't be at the back of ribadu that you know that part that dark part you are just sitting there and they just call and say ah maybe your wife or your girlfriend or whatever calls you and say ah I've, I've arrived lagos kai i just got there right now and she says are you serious 
Well, how was the journey? You see, I'll call you later. I'm even too tired. You see, I understand. Immediately you drop. You just lie to the girl that is a distance call. It's your relative from UK that is calling you. No sincerity. Or you're calling one lady and the lady just comes and you pick up the call. You say, ah, you safe. As, as the money entered, does not enter. Hurry up now. Don't waste my time. I, I have a beautiful girl here to buy something for her. Why are you wasting my time? And you are lying. Sisters, are the brothers not like that? Brothers, don't feel bad. You know me. I always balance the equation. <laughs> Hallelujah. A dishonest brother will produce a dishonest husband, a dishonest father, a dishonest leader, and will kill you. Are you listening to me? Deal ruthlessly with dishonesty. It's better for the brother to say, Mio, I'm trusting God. God has not helped me yet. This shoe you are seeing is my only one. This trouser is the only one. This shirt is the only one. But the spirit of faith is in me. You are seeing me pray in every koinonia. I'm sweating in your presence. You are seeing that we are flogging out this thing. The door will open one day. Is that correct? Many of you ladies, you like guys lying to you. You have itchy ears. You like it so. The guy just comes to you and he's laughing and he just says, Hi, how are you? And this is not how he speaks. So just because you came. And the guy comes and he's bouncing and he likes you. And he says, oh, sweetheart, I was wondering. Um, he said, let me talk to this guy. I need to be at the airport tomorrow. What's your tomorrow like? I'm going to take the first flight tomorrow. I have to be back. There's something my, my dad sent a consignment. And can you imagine? This is boys. You know, they are taking my humility for granted. And the lady's melting. Hey. You know it's a lie. Your roommates are watching from their window. You know it's a lie. You like it so. You go back and you carry the lie and you are telling your roommates. You are, you are saying it as if you don't believe him. But you are saying it to increase your reputation. You are claiming that you don't like it. But you are telling everybody, shut up if you don't like it. Why are you telling everybody? Say, can you imagine? That guy came and met me and he was talking about one airport in me. He wants to play with me. Sister B, can you imagine? That guy, and you are claiming that you are not enjoying what he's saying. Honesty. Number two. The guy must be teachable. Ladies say teachability. Any brother that is not teachable is going to drown you. You will follow him together and enter an ocean of trouble and he will drown you. And brothers, this is where we have to be very careful. Because you see, we guys are egotistic in nature. Are you following me now? It's very difficult. There are some brothers here. God must help you tonight. Your deliverance has started. From your culture, women don't talk to men. From your culture, women don't advise men. Is that true? Some of you are from royal families. And you are taking your village everywhere you go. Even inside your relationship. So you are with the lady and she's trying to advise you. And she's saying, um, sweetheart, have you considered this? way?" said, look, let this be the last time. Even the Bible said, wives, submit. Submit means shut up. Don't try me, oh. You are entering the fire and the lady is saying, honey, look at this. We are entering fire. See which fire? Guys, fire is burning. You are saying, which fire? Where is the fire? And later you carry the girl and put together in the fire. And it's burning two of you. Later you say, ah, it's true. This thing looks like fire. When it has burnt you and it's almost killing you. Brothers, be teachable. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of great strength. These ladies may look like they don't know anything, but I tell you something. If you are humble and you can listen, you will learn a lot of things. Any brother that is not teachable and arrogant and just believes you are the alpha and omega of that relationship, the lady should shut up. Even if she's speaking nonsense, one day she'll say something that is sensible. You must listen. Many husbands have entered into trouble Many husbands have done different things that, that one plot of land that somebody came to swindle you. Land of 10 million, you sold it for 2 million. 
your wife was telling you be careful be careful say be careful for what all these women they are too emotional there are many of you if you will be teachable you know what teachability is teachability is your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept when you're wrong that's why we taught ourselves in our character building series on four words what's the first one can you remember everybody what's the first one please you must say please what's the second one i'm sorry apologize when you are wrong number three thank you you must tell people if they do good for you 20 times say thank you 20 times what's the last one god bless you you must bless people so you must be teachable let's hurry up number three brothers you must be visionary and responsible there are many guys you have not finished managing yourself don't add a woman into it there are many guys you you have not led yourself you don't have self-management you are careless you are in discipline now you want to bring another lady and add her into your predicament you must be visionary when you hold a lady and say we are going out where are you going to I always give this example how many of you have climbed bike and the bike man told you you were asking him do you know this place do you know cgc before he finished he said yes later he starts going with you he just passes somewhere he said oh god this is not the road he said, oh sorry i forgot then he turns back later he comes and just passes and he's heading towards rema and you say oh god stop do you know where we are going he said, i thought you knew the place that's how many guys are you just bring the bike and hit the seat and tell the lady oh yeah climb the lady I used to say, climb. Is it not me? Once they climb from gear one, you go to the last one. You are just speeding. The lady says, sorry, you, where are we going? Say, leave me. Are we not, have we arrived there? Be patient. After 10 years, you have not defined where you are going. Never go out with any guy you don't know where he's taking you to. You better know where you are going, no? Don't lead yourself like a sheep to the slaughter hallelujah hallelujah very important he must be responsible psychologically <laughs> a guy who is always crying like a baby does not need relationship he needs help and growth somebody just say kai your hair is looking bushy he's crying he's the lady that says come <laughs> he says, see, things happen like that. The guy says, why is everybody doing to me? You are embarrassing the lady. They'll say, how about sister? Is it that there was no guy? Which baby did you go and carry like this? You enter a program. There's a seat here. They say, sorry, stand up for somebody else. The guy is already crying. The lady now stands up to hold him. I say, don't cry. You are not ready for a relationship, my brother. Please, please, please. Focus on your finances or something else. Your spiritual life. Because let me tell you something. There are pressures you are going to absorb in your life. Hallelujah. As a leader, you don't let people see your tears anyhow. It will kill their spirits. Hallelujah. Every lady needs a man that she can be secured around. A man that can protect her. I was told of a story that armed robbers came somewhere. Open this door now. Bow, bow, bow man just stabbed the wife and said stand up no he, he was pretending like he was sleeping she just said honey honey as if he was sleeping honey you must wake up oh. are you hearing what is happening say, i'm hearing now why would you just keep quiet the guy was sweating and shaking true life story the woman got up and started praying in tongues around her house they were shouting if you let us open this door by ourselves this and that and that do you know that eventually when the armed robbers left and the woman came she found the man dead yeah what killed him so who is protecting who there are many of you you like women but you are very fearful you don't have courage you are not emotionally balanced please don't think of getting into a relationship that you'll be crying all the time as if you are going to just one you know how people go to just one and they cry at a point the lady is feeling oh god did you bring me to protect this what did you bring me to do in his life 
You are not a man. Hallelujah. So that, that's it for the guys. Cardinal virtues. Ladies, brothers, if you love your destiny and where God is taking you, make sure you look at this. <laughs> Number one, the ladies must be submissive. Every lady says submission. Look up, please. Submission is not weakness. Submission is the ability to bring your strength under control. Are you following me now? What is submission? The ability to bring your strength under control. You see this from many of our mothers. The man can be shouting, saying something, and, and our mothers are not wrong, but they will just keep quiet. You will be wondering and say, if I were my mother, eh? How about we enter the same trouser? Say, my mother, my father is always doing with her. She's even doing like Musev. Eh? All these village with me. Habba, no man can try that. You better shut up. Oh. You better shut up. Because your mother was once a young CC like you and was bouncing like that. Ask her why she's calm now. Hallelujah. Many ladies have this funny. There are many things that we are doing that we don't know is childishness. This night you will see that it's just sheer childishness. Hallelujah. Submission. Very important. Bringing your strength under control. Number two. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm just summarizing what Pastor Jakes has already preached. So we have to run. Number two, teachability. Ladies, you must also be teachable. There are some ladies, Gamaliel. You always teach everybody. Gamaliel was the person who taught Paul. Some of you are Gamaliel. You sit in the midst of brothers. Do you know this? The brother comes to talk to you. Yeah, just like a Proverbs this and that said. This and that. And you think you are impressing him. The guy just gets up. Just tells his friend, baby, I'm to you now. let's just go somewhere. That's not it. It's not the way forward. This is nonsense. As you are talking, the lady is just saying, this is not a wife. This is a man. You are not teachable. There are some of you, no man can sit you down and talk to you. No man. You do something, so even if he's a pastor, you do something, Pastor Jack said, all right, two of you come to see me. He said, me, see you. Nobody brought me into this world, though. Even my father doesn't, you see that? So who do you want to come and marry you? Who do you want? Be fair. Who do you want to come and marry this kind of trouble? teachability number three sisters you must be physically attractive the brothers are not just spirits they dwell in bodies they have eyes my friend Jimmy says love is blind marriage will open your eyes sisters look up brothers look up too my brother you better don't deceive yourself if you are going far ah and you don't want to run it. Now, when I talk of beauty, beauty is a relative statement. But you must, don't carry a lady that you will not be proud of. Huh? You just see somebody says, my younger, is just my younger sister. Or you just look and say, oh, there's one lady that is disturbing me. Oh, me, I'm tired. I don't know what to do. You kill the lady. If you behave to a lady like that, you don't deserve her. Get out of her life and let the person who deserves her come in. Are you following me? Very important. Don't find yourself. You must be proud of the lady. Ladies, be physically attractive. That does not mean be pornographic or nude. You are a Christian. It means be nice. You are young. Don't celebrate your 50th birthday when you are 22. Be patient. The time will come. And all the brothers say... Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean you must have all the money. Look, we are watching. Brothers are happy when they see a nice sister. You are, you are, you are taking care of yourself. How much is powder? The type we use, how much is it? The type you use is 10,000. That's too expensive. Get the normal. Who will know? Who will know? It's only among yourself, ladies, that you know. Will we know? 
see a lady just comes there's, there's fats on your face oily face you are just moving walking anyhow you are just walking any you can't even compose yourself they are sharing food join the line you want to collect you are doing all these kind of attitudes the brothers are watching you need to tell yourself myself behave behave the bible says you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses behave hallelujah you must be physically attractive if you have one shirt iron it don't carry a shirt that is twice your size yes your mother gave it to you adero tell us reduce it Abba. must everybody know it was a gift you just carry needle and fold it and fold it and clip it can they reduce it The brothers are not idiots while we are praying in tongues Shut -da 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 <laughs> yeah please brothers look for what looks like your future <laughs> hallelujah can I come to the brothers now? Oh, I must come. You know me. Hallelujah. You see, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, don't criticize anybody until you have done twice what the person has done once. Hallelujah. Brothers, if you want that kind of glamorous lady, you must start working on yourself as up. Are you following me now? There are many brothers, you are bushy, you don't comb your hair, the dust is dry season, but you still see at the back of your shoe, mud of rainy season. You are, no, I will talk, you must be physically attractive. You wear one, one singlet for two months. It's easy to wear something on top. Who will know? You can't buy perfume of 500 naira. You just come, you are sweating. They say, hug your neighbor. Before they do anything, you want to hug. How much is sure? At least that's the basic one. Listen, you are a leader. You don't bob your hair. This side is more than this side. It's not like maybe it's a style. It's just disorganization of your hair. Because for a long time, you can't even go to the barbing salon and say, just have it, let it be nice. You finish bathing, even oil, you just, you are trying to comb it. You don't know whether it's back or front. You throw the comb away and get up. Just come for koinonia. And you just come and you are smiling. You think it's everybody that is smiling with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your, your clothes are always rumpled. Always. Always. Always rumpled. Hmm? Go and wear one kind of thing and carry one one kind of tie. You will stop here. You now wear it and you are coming and you are just eyeing the sister. She's not looking at you. I assure you. I assure you. I assure you. She's not looking at you. Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. We have to run. You must be physically attractive. Both parties. Be smart. We are not saying go and borrow everybody's clothes to come for koinonia with. Uh -uh. If you have been doing it, stop. It's not necessary. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. Hallelujah. You are borrowing your roommate's shoe every week. The day your roommate says it's coming for miracle service too. On that day, you wear your palms and sit outside. Even if you spams you have, wear it honorably. Polish it. Can I tell you something, brothers? I discovered something with ladies. They are not as materialistic as we think. I tell you, there are some ladies that love God and they are willing to start and go with you only if you will be honest. Sisters, is that true? It's not all of you that should say yes because some of you are very materialistic. I'm coming to you. 
So this was a summary of what Jake shared. Hallelujah. Very important. So how many of us have been blessed by those qualities? How many of us know that there are some of them we need to walk in ourselves? Don't lie now. Lift your hands. Don't pretend. I appreciate your honesty. This is why we are here. And God is helping us. Do you know why you need to work on these qualities? It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. But make sure there are honest efforts. Are you following me now? So that you can be a blessing to one another. Everybody say, I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Say one more time, I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Hallelujah. Alright, so we're going to talk quickly about entering into a relationship now. The process. The process of entering into a relationship. Again, let me have one lady and one guy. Please, can we have them quickly? Quickly, we have to. One lady, Taiwo, please come again. Aaron, God bless you. One lady and one guy. Hallelujah. Please look up. There is no crime. Everybody look up, please. There is no crime, brother, in seeing a sister that you love and you find yourself affectionate about. It does not make you unspiritual. Emoji, hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? There is no crime. <laughs> there is no crime. Hallelujah. When you find out as a brother, a good Christian brother, sharing the word in a, in a, in a meeting, like look at Koinonia, inside, people are inside, outside. Now you, are, you have been seeing this sister, she's in the choir. Her name is Taiwo. Hallelujah. Always ministering. Something is moving. Something is changing. Hallelujah. Please listen. I have to rush. We have to be out of here. Now, listen, brothers. When you want to end, let me look at. Look at me. Do you know why this thing keeps backfiring for some brothers? Let me tell you one of the reasons. The Bible says the labor of the fool will weary him. Not because there is no road. He doesn't know the road to the city. The reason why many of you, it's not necessary because you are not nice. You don't know how to do this thing. You will not seek advice. You will not seek counsel. You just see a lady like this after Koinonia. Worship team. They are holding their hands to pray. You can't even wait. Let them finish the prayer. You've got to stand close. You are just moving around. You can't wait. They say hug 20 people. You didn't hug anybody. You are just gallivanting around the worship team square here. As soon as they finish, just say, sister, please, can I talk to you? Now the lady said, well, for the benefit of doubt, we just finished fellowship. Say, I've been watching you. I have a policeman. You have been watching her. What else? I've been watching you. And uh, the other day, I, I, was, I was talking with my friend. Just says, please, please, I know where you are going. Please, I beg you. Just save yourself any stress. It won't work. You just get up and go to your room. Say, this colonial lady self now. I'll, let me just kukuma be sitting outside. You look, you you will pray. These are people that are seeing us pray. They know I'm a man of God, yet you won't say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Everybody say friendship. friendship. Say it, friendship. friendship. This is the first step to entering a relationship. You can't come and meet a perfect stranger because of your unbelieving roommates did it. You just saw one, one, one lady who just came in 100 level in her innocence. Her mother told her, when you go here, don't do now. The guy just came to threaten her. And the lady, out of fear, she just said, oh yeah, yes. Because she doesn't know what to have. You too, you were inspired by that testimony. You now got up and met a Christian sister who has been hearing the word. You just come and meet her. Say, I want to marry you. Pray about it. What is wrong with you? Eh, your father did it. So what? Change. See, listen. If your wife is your best friend, that naturally tells you that the probability of finding her among your friends is very high. 
correct the best friend is the best among friends is that true some of you you don't have friends this is what makes the sister know that you are ready to enter a relationship you don't work with anybody you don't greet anybody in church suddenly ah, after miracle service you have said Romeo around worship team you you don't greet anybody you are not in any group after prayer band finishes praying you just turn you are, you, you are always alone you are talking alone as if you are out of your mind when the sister starts seeing you near she is even afraid she doesn't know whether you are fine or not something wrong with this brother does he need counseling you must be friendly are you listening to me listen guys let me give you a big secret if you can make a lady laugh genuinely and sincerely you have taken some good steps into that journey i give you a tip that will work for you hallelujah don't carry your boring boring life your roommates should test run whether you are sociable or not they are always running away from you ah flog it in your room first before you go and disgrace yourself to one lady you are in love you are pretending like you are not in love you are just boning your face and coming to the girl you say can i see you the girl say i'm busy come now you yourself be friends one of the best ways of being friends is join a department join a department one of the benefits of a department is that it will help your social life is that true the worship team are so so if you see them you'll be amazed they love one another some of them were not like that when they started is that true the ushers ushers are you there they love themselves who do you love who loves you you don't know when you enter when see service in the house of god is a big helper to take you out of inferiority and complex they'll tell you lead prayer now you lead prayer and when you lead prayer ah, after the prayer meeting tyro says wow that was nice oh pure sisterly love no strings attached you do you are happy you didn't know how to do it now you can watch aaron do it you are you are learning who will know that you don't know tomorrow now you come they say oh go on another you are making progress are you making progress it's not like you are you join the department with the intention to marry the lady but you are becoming sociable it's giving them an opportunity to see your sincere heart is that true one day the lady comes late you stand up for her ah, ah. she says wow that was so kind you are learning you are reducing your journey you don't know some of you come from nowhere you see people who have been functioning they are taking their time you think you have the spirit of you just run from nowhere they don't know you you have no history you just came for koinonia twice you think you want a wife you just come and carry anybody we won't give you our ladies like that come and sit down share the word of god we want to be sure of the kinds of things our ladies uh, you they can't be praying in tongues you come with your babylon from wherever because you did talking for two weeks you think it's enough to carry them no sir they are not that cheap <laughs> hallelujah entering into a relationship take time to build friendship see not friendship for the purpose of relationship be a free person be happy with people are you listening to me and ladies there are some of you you are not helping yourself make sure when brother smile and greet you you just say he likes me Abba, you are in a church what kind of insecurity is that a brother smiles at you he just hugs you you go back and say i've been watching it's a lie it's a lie please this guy is pressing into god it's a lie don't blackmail him he loves god you just see a brother like you and the next thing you start becoming edgy and funny everybody say friendship so aaron begins to be friends maybe from department or something he may be in the same department he may be in the different department you know you are just serving in the house of god genuinely it gives room for the sincerity of your heart to be tested are you listening to me you are consistent in the body of christ at least the lady sees you you are a face that they know around she knows what you are hearing you know what she's hearing 
Is, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Never go out with a guy who you don't know who is feeding him and you don't know what is entering his head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second thing is seek counsel. Seek counsel. Many people think this is an act of immaturity. Many of you do not know. Look at me, brothers. Let me give you a secret. If you don't respect us, these ladies respect us. Are you listening to me? By the time you start meandering around them, they will call us. They will say, sorry, oh, this guy has been roaming around not to be presumptuous. And you, you think you are playing smartness. Every time you see us, you will claim as if the lady is this and that, while the lady has already told us. And you'll be disgracing yourself. Hallelujah. Very important. Seek counsel. There is nothing wrong. We are not demons. You can ask Pastor Jake. There are times that he comes to tell me, ah, so so and so so person. This guy likes this person. You can even see me jumping. I'm saying, yeah. Our people are entering good relationships. There are some relationships when we hear you have entered, we start crying. We start crying. You don't know the guy, but we, we know him. Hallelujah. Please seek counsel. Seek counsel. Don't seek counsel from unbelievers. Who tell you just try, oh. There is an age where guys will be coming, oh. You will get to an age nobody will come, oh. Just try. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. When you are entering into a relationship, friendship, friendship. Now that does not mean you cannot sit. I know of stories of perfect strangers they, they call it what they call it love at first sight i don't know what probability of it works in nigeria in nigeria hallelujah praise the lord seek counsel and then bless you sir. the next step is listen go to god and I, I want to talk a bit here about the concept of the will of God. Look up, please. As a brother, you love God. You are not a prophet. You are not an apostle. You are just a sincere believer who loves God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now you see Matilda. You've been looking at her and truly, oh, genuine love, not lost. If you find out that what is wrong with you is loss, come for counseling, not relationship. Counseling. We won't condemn you, but we'll help you. Genuine love, sincere love. Now you are looking at Matilda. Ah, ah. You've sought counsel. You go to God in prayer. Listen, listen. Now I want to correct a very erroneous concept about what people call hearing God. How many of you have heard what they call vision, seeing vision? That has put a lot of brothers under pressure. Please and please. The vision in Joel 2 was not women. Is that clear? Don't you brothers please. I deliver you from any heart attack you want to give yourself. To force yourself to dream dreams and see visions. There is nothing wrong. The Bible says God is at work in us both to will. Hallelujah. I love God. My heart is sincere. Are you following me now? Now Aaron sees Matilda. And you just say, oh, did you have a vision? It has made a lot of brothers to come with stories about their concept of the will of God. Because they know that if they, that's the gate pass into your life. So they, they've tried and tried. They just say, oh yeah, talk. God told me, please open the gate for me to enter. Be careful. God shows people visions. You don't see vision for any area of your life. When it comes to relationship, you suddenly become a prophet. Who sent you? Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? The, don't be embarrassed. Ah, ah, the other day, you saw Rose. And ah, when you saw Rose, even you, you wouldn't lie. You were praying. The prayer point just disappeared. You cannot even know what I was saying again. And he was sincere. Ah, you try to say myself, behave, please. I'm in the presence of God. You were trying to look at Pastor Jakes. You were seeing Rose again. Ah, something is happening. Don't feel embarrassed. Are you hearing me, brothers? Don't feel embarrassed. The only thing is check it. Don't be foolish. Some of you, if you see that to you, that's God said. Uh-uh. That's not God said. 
Because there are some brothers that what is happening to you is just infatuation. Ah, you saw this lady's hair. And wow, you are smiling. One day you see her coming out of Ribadu in the morning. She has not taken her bath. You just hear and say, ah, is that the girl I saw? Ah, I've changed my mind though. And you want to marry her. She will be pregnant too. Don't forget. Help us, Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? If God shows you a vision, if you're sitting and you just see Abigail, C21. Is that how I now, Ribadu? Ribadu is your wife. You just say, Yes, Lord. Abigail, where are you? Better come. Don't stop my destiny. You don't do that. The, listen, the Bible says, and Mary kept these things to herself. And you come, you can come to Pastor Jakes and say, sir, this is what I saw about this guy. Because I saw this about this guy. I saw this guy ab about the lady. They can be able to help you. Are you listening to me? Don't just take initiative on the strength of your vision alone. Your vision can mislead you. The Bible says we see in part. And so we what? prophesy in part. Are you getting blessed? Please, listen. You love God. You are praying for a life partner. You are saying, oh God, please bring a lady into my life who will love you, who will fear you, who we can stand together and accomplish the purposes of God for our lives. Hallelujah. Suddenly you come for miracle service, you just see Natina. Ah. And now you, you cannot even describe what is happening to you. Mama. <laughs> now Mama is wondering, ah, ah, Aaron, what is happening? I saw this lady just once and I, many of you feel embarrassed. You even cast it. Uh -uh. It may not be demonic. Are you listening to me? Try to establish good friendship with a person. And when you feel you've received advice and the time is ripe, listen, that takes me to the next step. Brothers have courage. Ladies don't kill. I think sisters, we need to tell the brothers this. Say brothers, brothers. We, don't we don't kill. Speak. Speak. Say one more time. Brothers, brothers. Don't look at yourself. Look at the brother. Brothers, brothers. We, don't we don't kill. Speak. The brother says, sisters, I'm not afraid. Listen. There are some of you that kick any guy that comes. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Koinonia, hear me inside and outside. Never, please, let me start with the sisters. Never see a brother, no matter how much you esteem him, that he comes to you and then you try to just do anyhow with him and say, hey, you don't know that shoe has size. You got up. Forget. Don't let Koinonia fool you. I'm not your mate. Oh. Don't be stupid. If not because of Koinonia that is the house of God. You, you, you cannot see your type. You come and stand. Don't do that. Don't do that. The brother you are laughing at today. Wait and see the promises of God in his life. By the time what he's speaking comes to pass. You will be amazed. Are you following me now? I was told a humorous story that there was a time Bishop Oedeko asked a part. I was told, I don't know if it's true. Please, please, so I had it too. If it's not true, accept it as fiction. There was a man of God. <laughs> and the man of God said he asked one lady and she said no. He kept quiet. Then it was, there was nothing. Just the promises of God. The treasure in earthen vessels locked up inside. Later on, he asked his current wife and she said yes. Some years later on, they were in a program and he saw the former lady. Now she was also married. And he told his wife, he said, see, I asked this woman. And she said no. The woman walked to her and said, thank you for telling my husband no. You think that woman will sleep? Hi! You might say, God, no. this is how my destiny passed me by. Many of you want ready-made. You don't want to pay the price and build. Hallelujah. 
when a brother wants to talk to you please give him listening ears especially when he comes with a heart of sincerity and responsibility even if you are not interested in the relationship present yourself in a way and manner that will not discourage him there are some brothers when they ask one sister since 2010 they've not asked another one again one day you wanted to ask the girl she just she was just you were going here she just came out you just turned as if you want to clean a chair no courage your heart is failing you everybody say take courage, take courage. sisters help our brothers it's not easy to come and stand before a lady and start rapping and talking stories. Hallelujah. It's not easy. It takes a lot of courage. Brothers, is that true? Yeah. Especially when you start giving one kind of face. As if you don't like it. You finish praying in your room. And say, God, change my story. Give the brother a chance. Give him a chance. Please. Hallelujah. Is that true? There are many brothers here that are sitting. They want to enter a relationship. But ladies, you are hostile. You are rude. You leave an impression in the heart of the brother that will injure him. It's not fair. Is that true? And then brothers, take it easy. I know that no means wait for a guy. So if the lady tells you no, just don't say me, I don't take no for, I would. Ah, 30 missed calls between Koinonia and her room. 30 missed calls, 5 text messages, 500 naira recharge card. You have called all her friends. Take it easy, brother. Haba. Take it. Let her think. You say, I can't sleep. Uh-uh. You better check whether it's lost or love. Whatever is pursuing you, run to court. Run to court and go and flog it out with destiny. Don't be a pest around the lady like that. You are going for a lecture. You just say, ah. In fact, you know, I was about to call you. That's how you follow her. She's in the restaurant. You go there. Money that you wanted to go to Jordan Bookstore with. You paid for her food. Now you have not eaten. You are hungry. You've not done your assignment. You are failing. You are emanciating. You are dying. What is wrong with you? Your roommate say, what is wrong? He say, love. It's not love. Hallelujah. Are you learning something, please? Praise the Lord. Very important. Make sure you are convicted. There are some brothers here. Please look up and I must warn you. Everybody say double dating is wrong. Say one more time. Double dating is wrong. There are guys that have ladies in every faculty. Every faculty you have a representative and they don't know it's not good you are, you are a Christian I hope you know that we don't believe in dating are you listening to me in the kingdom there is nothing called dating correct you know what dating is ladies let me explain to you so that you hate it very well dating is that you parade many ladies the bachelor Ask some of them out, sleep with some of them, do all you can do, and then start editing them one by one, one by one, one by one, until you find the one that is suitable with you. You've slept with them, you've taken them out. Which lady do you know that every lady you see is somebody else's wife? You don't treat ladies like that. Is somebody learning something? Double dating is very wrong, very, very wrong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So brothers, get close to the lady. Develop courage and talk. Sisters, be open. Don't conclude on a guy and just say, this is not my kind of guy. What do you know about all your destiny? Somebody you are seeing today that you say may not be your kind of guy may be the greatest blessing in your life. Is that true? Hallelujah. Let's rush. We have to pray. Now, let's assume you successfully get into the relationship. Say amen. amen. So you have flogged out issues and you are now in the relationship. What do you do? Please write. These are things that you must observe while during the relationship. Number one. Practice communication. Practice what? Communication. 
one of the number one killer of marriages and relationship is no communication talk no matter how bad issues are talk talk how many of you know that a quiet person can be more dangerous than a noisemaker because if somebody is quiet you don't know what the person has in his heart or her heart talk talk hallelujah see because no matter how anointed you are listen when you get into a relationship are you following me patience come when you get into a relationship now let's assume abel is going out with patience abel stand up assuming come now hurry up hold our hands let's save time please hold our hands smile you too now smile. all right come now they are in a relationship please everybody listen do you know every time people come to me for counseling and prayers for relationship i tell them whenever you enter a relationship please listen see yourself as two farmers are you following me now two farmers holding a hoe together and you are going to the farm to go and plow the land ready-made relationship does not exist write it everybody has weaknesses and strengths when you say you love somebody next time you are saying you love a sum total of their liabilities and weaknesses many of you want a perfect man you want a perfect woman you will never find it because you are not perfect yourself are you listening to me now Ebe, where are you from district you are from kogi where are you from Venice. now this is kogi this is benway two separate cultures is that true now they love god they all come for koinonia for instance for instance for instance except otherwise for instance <laughs> hallelujah she has her mindset that came from culture he has his mindset that came from culture. Do you know that there will be frictions? Are you following me now? Those frictions are not a sign that the devil is eating you people up. They are just a sign that you are human beings. Are you listening to me? What is the remedy? Communication. Two of you sit down now. Find somewhere and sit down. Come. Empty the shift for them. Sit down now. We are acting with you. People. Communication. Communication. Talk about it. Hallelujah. The guy does not eat pepper. You, you like pepper. You like seeing the pepper. You can carry it and put it in your mouth. The first day you made gari for him. You put pepper. You were smiling. Ah, The guy just touched it and a headache just came on him. And now the brother doesn't want to talk. Ah, this pepper is killing him. He said, do you like the food? I said, come on. This food was as sweet as you. And now you are, you are lying. Tomorrow you will suffer it again. She will make beans. Add pepper on it. She will be telling everybody, you know my guy likes my cooking. He likes the pepper. Funny enough, this guy is dying. This pepper is killing him. Every time you eat her food, you must have a runny nose. Brother, what happened? Don't say forget this. Everybody say communication. Communication, communication helps you to understand yourself the bible says husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge love is not enough are you hearing me have you not seen a lovely roommate that you could not live with how many of you love your roommates but you cannot take that same roommate next session but you love them some of you you that some of you that are raising hands is your roommates that don't love you because of what you are doing hallelujah everybody say communication it will enhance your relationship are you listening to me there are many ladies that the moment you enter a relationship you already have your expectations that only you know i expect at least i give this relationship five days i should visit chicken republic that's what you have in your heart that's what you have wished and wondered every time i'm holding load let the guy that's what you have in your heart are you following me now after five days he doesn't take you out he's paining you but you cannot talk say it so that if it's not godly you can flog it together 
Are you listening to me? Communication is one of the number one killer. Roommates that don't talk always fight. The only way to know that he's angry is when he slaps you. You say, did he really hurt you? He said, it has been paining me. Why didn't you talk, Oga okay, roommate? Why didn't you talk? Many ladies, you are like that. You don't talk. You go and grumble to your friends and gossip to everybody and say, this guy, we went to the restaurant, Sam. They were putting the ice cream on the machine, Chicken Republic. He just started taking it. Couldn't we sit down? Me, I hate this thing. And you were laughing all through the euphoria of the excitement. And the guy thought that that's what you like. He will repeat it again tomorrow. Hallelujah. You invited him for dinner. He wore one tie. The shirt was torn. He didn't notice. It wasn't his business. You tell him, ah, sweetheart. Um, see, when there is this chemistry between both of you, you have come to be honest and true to yourselves. Are you following me now? And you can jokingly tell him, say, you, self, I'm going to buy you a new, a new trouser. That your trouser has tried. She has come into your life. You don't joke. You are always serious. You are always praying. You are always fasting. You don't discuss the things you should discuss. If all you are doing in your relationship is Bible study and prayer, you are not helping that relationship. Okay, sister, the Lord gave me a revelation. Shut up. Can't you talk about your lives? Are you not good? What is your best food? There are people, if we call some people in relationship now, you and you, what is your best food? The guy will say, Gary, is his best food. You, you say, is, is beast. You don't know yourselves. You are that much of strangers. Who is the Holy Spirit? You know, you know. What are the 12 names of disciples? You know, you know. When is Jesus coming? Soon, soon, you know. Where are two of you going? You don't know. Don't spiritualize Things that you are supposed to do to help yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Everybody say communication. communication. Very important. There must be communication. During a relationship. Number two. Set boundaries. Everybody say boundaries. Paul said the, although we are not under the law. But the Bible says the love of God does what? Please set boundaries. Some of you were in the world. Is that correct? And you had relationships where you were in the world. You could have sex anytime you want. You can spend weekend in the guy's house anytime you want. You can bath with the guy in the same bathroom. Now you are born again. You have left Egypt. Force Egypt to leave your mind. In Jesus name. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Hallelujah. You must set boundaries. Stand up again. Two of you come. This side, this side. Let's go. So you discuss. Abel, you are a great man. No, you are going far. But you are a man. Say, I'm a man. Part of the reason why you ask this lady out is because you are physically attracted to her. True or false? Please say it. True or false? That means if you get married to her, you will sleep with her one day. True or false? And the reason why you are not sleeping with her now is not because you are an angel or a spirit. It's because you love the Lord. True or false? When you enter a relationship, you are vulnerable by default. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying, believers? What does that mean? You define it. What rules that you don't define, you will cross boundaries without knowing. You can be a Christian. Over 60% or more of Christian relationships have people sleeping around the guy going to spend weekend in the girl's house the girl going to from koinonia now today is Friday I'll be the grace of our Lord Jesus your load is outside you just carry the guy takes you in his car and he just goes I was a service say nice even if it's Benihin you watch throughout that night sin is at your door correct Say, but me, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't used to sleep with the guy. Yet, 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 keep going every day. The Bible says, and Lord settled near Sodom. He did enter Sodom. When they were coming to rescue him, where did they find him? In the middle of Sodom. This is how many people have gotten themselves into trouble. Discuss it. 
Sister, you are not firewood. Discuss it. You are emotional. Talk. Abel, you tell her. Say, look, I love God. And in this relationship, we are going to keep the values of the kingdom. If for any reason, any spirit or anything turns my head one day, don't be ashamed. This is somebody, are you saying it in, in the presence of the congregation? Please, help me. Don't be disappointed that day. Oh, just help me. Slap me or run. Just do something. Remind me of my destiny. Just put a picture of hellfire on your phone. Do something that will help me. Sister, listen. And I must say this. Listen, we are humans. Church people are hypocrites and liars. Me, I'm not like that. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Very important. You can't come and visit him by 11.30 in the night. Eh? He just had practicals morning till night. Then you came around. He said, I, 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 was, I was reading and I didn't know what to do with myself. Ah, you are looking for trouble, oh. You are looking for trouble. The brother is already on his boxers. He's trying to lie down. He's trying to sleep. Now you come in. He's going to marry you one day, oh. He's going to marry you one day. You are fast forwarding that day now. You will die. You are there to protect the brother's life, not to kill him. Can't you talk on phone? Am I, am I blessing you? This is the issue. I know we're out of time. We will pray, but we need to talk about this. It's very important. There are many anointed brothers that suddenly entered relationships and they found out that they, they are sleeping with the lady and doing a lot of things to their own shock. Because number one, you didn't discuss it. Number two, you are not doing anything about it. Hallelujah. Very important. You must talk about it. Your roommates sleep around and they come and they are talking about all their experiences. All those devilish things. And you sit down, you are hearing it. Now it's affecting your mind. You don't know. You think because you are a Christian, it will just... No, it's affecting your mind. You are getting emotional. You are getting seduced by that statement. Before you know it, you find yourself and the innocent brother, because he likes you, will fall victim. Everybody say, I, I receive grace to set boundaries. Christians, I know what I'm saying may offend some of you because it's a kai I beg, Jare, your own. You have gone too extreme. Please, Abba. Well, if your destiny is colorful and you want to get there, ask yourself a question. Are you ready for a child now? If you are not, behave. Brother, for every time you sleep with a lady, see the vision of a baby. Are you ready? If you are not, behave. Praise the Lord. Please define boundaries. Christian relationships should reveal the character of Christ. And you, sister, one day something comes upon the brother, whatever it is. Instead of you to help the brother, you now start going around. Ah! These brothers, I'm surprised. Oh, Koinonia, shut up, please. Did he tell you it's a spirit? Help him. Help him. Help him. Don't disgrace the brother. Oh, I will talk. Hallelujah. It's very important. Help the brother. And brother, help the sister. When she's calling you and you don't understand what she's saying in the phone. Be talking with one ear, be praying. Find a way, let your spirit be praying. Talk about the second coming of Jesus. Talk about the end of the age. Just say something that will bring the sister back to herself. Don't go and spend weekend in a guy's house. You are not married to him. All the sisters say amen. amen. I know many Christian ladies. Once it's Friday, somebody comes from Lagos or somewhere. You go and spend. How can you go and spend weekend? 
in the house of somebody you are already emotionally attached and physically attracted to. You are vulnerable. Hallelujah. You are going to go and bath. The brother is watching you. Ah. You, are, you want to kill the brother? You are bathing. The guy is just singing choruses around your bathroom. Or God go to the parlor. Trouble. If a guy lives in a house and you go, you can enter the parlor, you can enter the kitchen. But you, you begin to put yourself in trouble. See, all I'm trying to say is that create boundaries. Can I tell you something? Brother, when you start sleeping with a lady, I assure you, your chances of marrying her will diminish by a sizable factor. Because part of the things that you should make, how, make you want that lady is that she's keeping herself and is supposed to be the blessing and consummation of marriage. Are you listening to me? Sister, you just open up yourself to any brother. He's just sleeping with you and telling you that, don't worry, in two weeks I'll give you an engagement ring. You wait and go and hear what he's saying in the midst of his friends. Hallelujah. Do you know, every time you sleep with a lady or you sleep with a guy that you are not married with, there is a seed of resentment and hatred that comes. That's what happened between Adam and Eve when they went out of the glory of God. Be careful. Be careful. Some of you watch every kind of film. The guy is here, the lady is here. You are watching all kinds. Please, God bless you. Please be seated. You're watching every kind of film. When I talk about all those film things, some of you think it's not an issue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Put boundaries. Avoid things that arouse you people. Avoid things that arouse you people and get you into trouble. Hallelujah. You just see the guy. You just come and fly on the guy. He's on the bed. You just fly. Ah. <laughs> and the brother is smiling as if he's in control of things. You better, you better start praying. You are not in control. Very important. Hmm. Hallelujah. Build together. Everybody say I will define boundaries. You are in a relationship right now. You have not defined the boundaries. Do it tomorrow. Define it. How far is far? How far is far? Please define it. Hallelujah. Now, I will round up with this. There are many other things, but we're out of time. We really are out of time. Just give me a few minutes, five minutes, and we're out. Danger signs. Oh, this is important. You must write it. Danger signs that your relationship is nose diving or that your relationship may not work out. Danger signs. I must say this. Very important. Number one. When you find yourself consistently violating boundaries, that relationship may not work out. Did you hear what I said? Are you listening to me? What did I say? Consistently violating boundaries. No way. A time will come. Look at me. The lady will be so cheap or the guy will be so cheap. They will be like a rag for you. Discontent will enter your heart. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Take these boundaries issues seriously. I know some of you feel, why is he talking like this? Okay. Once you are consistently violating boundaries, every night, every weekend, you are coming to his house, all kinds of things. No. Your chances of getting married are being slashed down seriously. Number two. Number two danger sign. Excessive involvement of third parties in your relationship. This is very important. There are many of us, the number of counselors and senators and members of the House of Assembly in your relationship are too much. Too much! You have a Senate that decides on everything. 
you want to cook for the guy, upper house, lower house, must decide. Two of you cannot flog out issues. This is what is killing many relationships. Hallelujah. There is too much involvement of third parties. Let me tell you something. God is my witness. And for years we've been doing this. Once we pray for people and bless their relationships, you can ask Pastor Jakes, we stay out. Are you listening to me? We don't come and say, oh, we are leaders over you and we are just scrutinizing. No, we stay out. We only come in if you invite us or where we see that guy, there is a need. Are you listening to me? Listen, if your friend enters a relationship, please stay out. What I mean stay out is define boundaries. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of you are too involved in the relationship of your friends and loved ones. We don't even know whether it's the friends that are in relationship or you are the one. You are too involved. You can veto things on behalf of your friend that is in a relationship. It's their business. Leave them alone. Please. Go and pray and wait for your own. Leave them alone. excessive involvement of third parties once you start allowing too many people to come into you they will confuse you they will make you to make wrong decisions at the end of it that relationship will not work danger sign number two danger sign number three when you find yourself this is important when you are consistently quarreling and manifesting rage over trivial issues just know that that relationship has entered the beginning of the end Look up, please. Look up. When Zuera's food suddenly stops being sweet, promise. Food that you used to eat every day. You were lean like you would die. When you entered the relationship, it improved on you. Now you can see Zuera's food is not sweet again. Her hairstyle is not nice again. Are you following me now? Her text messages are not... Once you find yourself edgy over trivial things, your heart has left that relationship. Is someone learning something in this place? Quarreling over trivial issues. Do you know why? There is a scripture, we will not read it. But the Bible says, 1 Peter 4 verse 8. It says, I believe 1 Peter 4 verse 8, if I'm not mistaken. Love covers a multitude of wrongs. Look at me. When you love someone, you will give excuses for the person. Is that true? Yeah, danger sign. I like the red. Media, God bless you. Red. Danger sign. Quarreling and manifesting rage. You see a guy just comes. This is a lady that before, she's your queen. Eh? Transpose, let me sing a song. By two or three keys. You are the reason I'm here. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. That's the song you sang. Oh, don't forget. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. Smile. And the lady is just smiling. Now, listen. Suddenly, I've got my mind made up. addressing that attracted you to her suddenly becomes insulting. Everything. Everything. Once you find that kind of quarrel, please, let me tell you something. If you are not ready to marry her, leave her alone. Somebody else will like her. Don't put any lady under your care and frustrate her. Are you listening to me? Sisters, I must tell you this. Danger sign that your relationship will not last. If the guy you are going out with does not have anybody he listens to, are you listening to me? Don't ever go out with anybody that cannot listen to people. He will kill you. One day he will beat you, stand on you and be stamping you and you will die there and nobody will know. There are some of us, you are going out with guys nobody knows. They don't listen to anybody. Nobody can talk to them. Pastor Jake says, oh, I want to see him. He said, no, please, leave me. That kind of thing will not help you. 
Hallelujah. When you see these three things, three things happen. Your relationship is nose diving. You need counseling and you need help fast. Hallelujah. Number four. Maybe we'll talk about, we'll still talk about it next. We'll stop here. Because I still have a lot of things to talk about. There are two issues I want to talk about that many people don't discuss in relationship. Number one is on the issue of health and marriage. But we'll talk about that next week. Is that correct? Health and marriage. This has become a serious issue. If somebody is an SS and she comes and she's in a relationship with somebody who is an SS, can it work? Will they work? Hallelujah. And then the issue of crossing boundaries. Hallelujah. Somebody from Katsina marries an Irobo lady. What, what happens when you are crossing boundaries? The place of family and so on and so forth. And then we'll address the issue of late marriage. Family life, there is a lot we'll talk about. How many of you have been blessed so far? Rise up, let's pray. We'll take that next week. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray for one minute. Say, Lord, thank you for your wisdom. I believe that God has spoken to many people tonight. There are many of you that need to change things. You need to adjust things tonight. Very quickly, I'm going to pray. Please pray. We're out of here. Please pray. Those of you who have crossed boundaries in your relationship, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I ask for grace. Honestly. Be honest with yourself. No one condemns you, but be honest. virtues that you need to build teachability some of you sisters need to go and work on yourself seriously the way you are right now you will not be a blessing to any man you can be a blessing Kai, but you are not yet a blessing same with the brothers lift your voice and pray and say Lord help me help me I want my marriage to glorify you. I want my relationship to glorify you. I don't want my children to come and find a curse. I'm tired of the things that I saw in my own family. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when I was preparing for this, the Lord told me to take one altar call and I'm going to pray. Just one virtue I want to pray for people. If you have been, the Lord told me this, please. If you know that you have a problem with anger and temper, I'm going to pray for you. Listen, don't stand there judging the people that are coming out. Are you hearing me? This is a family, none of your business. is their personal affair with God. It may not be that you want it so. There are people, it's this, the guys and ladies, you just find you can be angry. It's one of the things that is stopping you. I'm going to take an altar call. Please, find, come out and come and forget about nobody really has any business with you whether or not. You, please, come out quickly. Inside and outside, be honest before God. Come and kneel down here. Just kneel down and line up here. A rage and temper. Some of you is what has destroyed your former relationships. Don't be afraid. Don't let anybody scorn you. Please, hurry up. Everybody, come and kneel down. Come out of her right now. Now, devil of. Come out. Come out now. Come out of her. Come out. Come out of her. It's a spirit. It's not your fault. Don't pretend. Listen. Listen, don't stay outside when you should be here. Don't pretend. This relationship series is to, let me tell you, Koinonia is a family. Nobody has time for you. Everybody has time for their own destiny. Some of you, this is what has killed your relationships. You get into a relationship, anger, rage, 
you can carry anything you can carry bottle and tear the guy's head and tell him sorry later on this is demonic hallelujah don't be ashamed you are a christian nobody is doubting your salvation god wants to help you some of you are very kind but if the brother dear does anything you will give it to him from your mind you don't know why you are doing it lift your hands because i'm seeing a lot of spirits i'm going to pray when i pray the power of god will move across this congregation that thing will be broken are you listening to me we've taken time but let's pray our relationship series is not just about love we are setting people free this is what is stopping some people when i was preparing the lord told me make sure you pray against this this is why some of you cannot enter it. you are a pretty lady you love god you are sincere lift your hands everybody rage lift your hands very high because i'm about to pray fire will fall father in the name of jesus every spirit behind temper and rage right now in the name that is above all names let the fire of god move across this congregation come out of god's people now come out come out come out come out shake it that spirit of anger that spirit of rage let the power of God move across right now. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. Come out. Go. 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 Those of you in front, lift up your hands, please. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. And I declare that every spirit of anger, while you are praying it, some of you, you will feel something leaving you literally. It will jump out of you. I tell you, you just keep praying. It will jump out of you. Say in the name of Jesus. This spirit of anger. This spirit of rage. Come out of me right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I declare. Look at me. There are many of you that are in beautiful relationships. God ordained relationships. But this spirit of anger and rage. When you are angry, you can do anything. This is what has destroyed you. Somebody offends you. It will take 100 days saying I'm sorry before you accept. He said, Lord, I'm here to say how much I adore you. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many But by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you will solve them. But this is the reason why we are here tonight to say. Just to let you know that I love you. I'm to say I adore you. Think on the words as you sing them. Let me 
They are very powerful words. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I am your friend. He said that I'm your friend. You alone are my desire. You alone. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nobody can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Will you help me find the way? Help me find the way. Bring me back to you. Say, Lord, I love you. From the depth of my heart, I love you. Ambrose I love you from the depth of my heart. Not because of the things that you have done for me. Just the symbol. Oh, my soul. Rejoice. Take joy, my king. Take joy, my king. Take joy in what you hear. In what you hear. Oh, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let your ears sweet sound in your ears hallelujah yes lord flow to you let it flow to you let the river of my worship flow to you let it flow to you flow to you let the river of my worship let the river of my worship flow to you let it flow to you Lord to you flow to you let the river of my worship let the river of Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we honor you for tonight. We bless you. It's always a privilege. We bless you for the opportunity to receive from you, to worship at your feet. We love you. We love you. We love you. We honor you. We're not just here to receive from you. We're here to bless you. Thank you, Father. 
in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please greet one another and be seated. Hallelujah. Did you greet one another? Do it again. You may be greeting your wife oh. or your wife's friend. Hallelujah. Or your marriage cake designer. Hallelujah. How many of you know it's a privilege to be in God's presence? Before you were born, there were angels worshipping him. And the best you can do is to join them. Hallelujah. So it's always a big privilege to hear the word of God. The word of God created the heavens and the earth. Listen, no matter what it will cost you, hear me, no matter what it will cost you, let it not be burden enough for you to forfeit the project of letting the word of God shape your life. Are you listening to me? No matter what it will cost you. We live in a time where people love convenience so much. Let me tell you something. Look up. Don't be deceived by this suit you see me wearing. Many of the revelations that God's people have had and received today came. There were times, sir, when we will worship in the rain, people will fall under the anointing in the mud. You see, the things of the spirit come at a cost. When you truly want, the Bible says there is no man who worries that will entangle himself with civilian affairs. Do not let westernization corrupt your passion for God. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I may but touch. That means, look, the business of convenience is out of the way. When you are desperate for something, nothing else matters. Are you listening to me? So, I, I'm not just saying this because of the rain. There must be a resolve. I'm yet to see something that will stop me from my love and commitment and passion for God. The word of God will shorten your journey in life. Let me tell you, no matter what price you are paying now, it's not compared to the price you will pay when you are ignorant of the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter what price you are paying now, it will be more than worth it. The price of ignorance is unbelievable. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. And I worship your holy name. Father, help us not to be so familiar with your presence. Let it not be a burden to appear in Zion and receive your word we bless you we thank you for your spirit help us by the power of the Holy Spirit listen many things happen upon Mount Zion there's healing there's deliverance can I tell you something with the Lord the job of the Holy Spirit is to meet the needs of God's people we can be talking about marriage and relationship. And the hunger of someone in a congregation is a pain in his body. The Holy Spirit will not say, no, this is not miracle service. Uh-uh. Are you listening to me? So God can be doing one thing entirely to the congregation, yet be visiting someone individually. Many things happen in Mount Zion. Are you listening to me? God will not allow an oppressed person come and go back because we are talking about marriage and love. God will not allow a poor person to come and go back with his mindset because we are talking about character. No. He has a very, very unique way 
of dealing with individuals. So while you're here, everyone, I want you to know that God is dealing with everyone as an individual. That's why you can hear a message that looks like it was customized for only you. God will hit all the areas of your questions one by one. And then you'll be like, wow, God, this is amazing. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. I cannot know the thoughts of everybody, but there is the Spirit of the living God. And because he understands the thoughts of everyone, he'll be able to minister to you. Some of you are standing, some of you are sitting. Look, let me tell you something. If there is no space, sit on the floor. You can come and sit on the stage. It's better to sit on the floor before God than to disgrace yourself before men as a result of lack of knowledge and revelation. Say after me in the name of Jesus, my mind is made up. There's no going back when it comes to the pursuit of God. Say it one more time, my mind is made up. If you don't believe it, don't say it, you won't go to hell. But if you believe it, say my mind is made up. Yes. There is a determination that you must have. A very serious spiritual determination that nothing will deter me. During the miracle service, I saw some people sitting at the fence. You will be amazed how that those who are sitting at the fence will be connecting more because they don't have the luxury of those inside. Hallelujah. Don't let luxury corrupt your passion for God. I'm saying it again. Don't let luxury. Luxury is good. We believe in excellence. And as much as God grants us grace, we will ensure that the standard of excellence is kept. But you must love your future more than your today. Use today as your seed. Doesn't matter what it will cost you. Hallelujah. And then, God that sees the things that you are doing will reward you. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for a few people. Just give me five minutes before we're getting into family life series. Um, we're continuing, yeah, but I want to pray for some people. Hallelujah. So that we will where are those from Mina? Please come, come and line up here quickly. open your spirit you can go with something you've never gone with before it's my desire that God will anoint you and use you risking yourselves on the road it's very serious I want you to catch something brother tap him look at me just look at me Just look at me. Try to keep looking at me. You may not know what is happening to you. You can't stand it. It's a limitation that is breaking in your life. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you desire, I'm not done with you. Whatever it is that you desire God to do in your life, as I minister to you, I want you to open your hearts to receive. I don't need to ask you what it is. Hallelujah. Just believe God. Let me pray with you. So, Father, anoint them. Hold my hands.
hold it with both of your hands. Look at me. There's fire burning in your eyes. Grace for you to love God. Something is happening to you. Now look at me. You will be a great teacher of the world. Just look at me. I know it's not easy, but just look. Take it now in the name of Jesus. Teaching grace to come mighty upon you. May the Lord visit you in a mighty way. Let the distractions leave your life. Let the desires die so that your eyes will see spiritual things. I bless you in the name of Jesus. You can go back to your seat. Yes. Hallelujah. There are two ladies here you had three days ago. You saw me ministering to you in a dream. Please come out. You saw me ministering to you in a dream. Three people. I didn't know that. You. Remember, I begged you for five minutes. Can we do that? You saw me ministering to you. This is not guesswork. It's not like. There's one more person. There's one more lady. body, I ignite a passion for the things of the spirit in you. Hold my hands. With both of your hands. Let her go so she can stop. Come out of her now. Give her vision, so oh Lord. Give up visions. Give up visions. Let your eyes be open to spiritual things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ushers, please come, all of you. Please, quickly, 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 let's save time. Now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord says, I should release upon you the anointing for academic excellence. This is what I'm praying for you for. This is not an impartation for academic excellence. Something will happen to your mind that will surprise you. Believe it. Some of you really need this prayer. So I'll pray for you. As I pray for you, the hand of God will touch you. I feel the fire of God upon my hand. I have come to the end of my step. Take over I prophesy to you, step into a level of supernatural academic exploits by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, step into unusual levels of mental acumen 
whatever is an academic mountain in the name of Jesus I command that it crumbles before you we command the rain of carryovers to go I command every academic issue doesn't matter how difficult it is I agree with you I release the faith of God in the name of Jesus God bless you hallelujah but now you know that our job here is just to align to the Holy Ghost it doesn't matter what we have no business with religion in this place hallelujah no business at all our job is to flow I see a plane flying over you stand up what is this that I see the Lord is showing me a plane flying over you and I'm seeing writings on tables what do you do you are writing I'm seeing you writing on table and I'm seeing planes flying God is opening doors of international it will happen you will have God will open your works because I'm seeing you writing on a table the Lord is and I'm seeing planes flying over you the Lord will take you far beyond you believe that hold my hands let me pray for you let your writing step into a new dimension hallelujah praise the Lord sometimes I don't know why God just flows like this you really cannot predict what it is that hallelujah can do impartations, can bless. Can. It really doesn't matter what it is. Your job is to be expectant and open. Hallelujah. When you come for koinonia, we can be talking about how to enter a relationship and the Holy Spirit is setting men on fire. This is, this is not your church. This is a strange place that we do not even know what to call it. That's why we call it koinonia. Koinonia is not the name. Koinonia is a, a description, an attempt to give a caption of what the Holy Spirit does to people. Hallelujah. I welcome you and we thank God for what he's doing. Many of you may not know why all these impartations and these things happen. Hallelujah. Even if you do not understand, just give thanks because God is certainly not wasting his time. Hallelujah. One by one by one by one see him blessing people touching people hallelujah and sometimes the Lord opens my eyes and I see the angels of the Lord and I see them directing me towards certain things that's why sometimes we do all these stupid and crazy things that we do on stage doesn't make sense breaks every rule of Bible college and ministry ethics but it works and that's what people want results not stories not noise people are tired of jargons the Bible says when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of men's speech but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith your faith will not be grounded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of God don't make your church or your fellowship when you become pastors and leaders don't let your congregation be places where the devil just comes and rides in and out freely because you are looking for money and eating food and running with no discernment. Let it be a place of fire. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Now, we've been considering a series on family life. You will be so blessed tonight in the name of Jesus. I hope you're writing something. Now, when it comes to the subject of relationship and family life, it's very, very broad. Um, it really cannot be exhausted because you are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. You're not dealing subjects about faith and so on and so forth. You can exhaustively discuss them, but when it comes to issues of relationship, and family life is very broad every every family is a peculiar case on its own 
hallelujah so it's very difficult to be able to encapsulate a principle that works as it were 100 percent and the only hope we have for that is the word of god opinions of men suggestions from counselors can only go so far there are many geographical differences and so on and so forth so because of all of these things um, our focus please understand this our focus on the relationship and family life series is to cover number one the principles of entering a relationship that's the first aspect pastor jake started it and then i was able to touch that last week just to guide us on the preparation and the process of entering a relationship a godly relationship then number two and that's what we'll be discussing today maintaining your relationship whether marriage or marriage slash relationship you can write it we'll be sharing some principles and then generally principles for successful marriage like i said we can only touch so far and we'll pray we have a goal in the family life series to be able to guide us and we have discovered that these are the major areas hallelujah our congregation is predominantly made up of young people and so we have to focus our teachings um, so we spoke about the preparation and the principles the process of entering a relationship you can get the teachings they are free please make sure you get it if you don't get it you may have a hard time trying to follow up with us now i had so many text messages from ladies this week hallelujah so many questions you cannot imagine hallelujah some of you were writing questions that i know is you sir what if there's somebody you just know that they're talking about themselves they want to use third party eventually you forget that you are using third party communication and then you say what if there are some there's somebody and then the brother tells you you just know that they are not why don't you tell me this is my problem and this and that hmm? one lady sent a text and said sir you have to talk about this thing today i mean she like three or four pages and she really wanted it by god's grace we'll talk about some of these things i appreciate only one guy only one guy sent me a text hallelujah only one guy ladies god bless you don't keep quiet until you find the right answers it's better to talk than to act foolishly is that correct ask your questions don't keep quiet about it until you are absolutely satisfied there's a saying in Hausa that the person who is always inquiring about the road will not be missing but the one who says i know the road then when it backfires you begin to blame people okay so we're going to be talking about something very interesting now there are two books that i would recommend and most of our teachings will come from some of those books number one gary chapman five love languages don't say ah, i've read it just keep quiet don't let don't even start this night keep quiet and listen Number two, love and respect, Dr. Emerson Egrich. Powerful books. They are believers. They love God. They are very, very serious with God. Time-tested principles. They've been into marriage counseling and relationships using biblical perspectives for more than three decades. And so we'll be teaching around this. And of course, the greatest of all is the word of God hallelujah okay so two scriptures before we start off tonight once again turn laugh with your neighbor give him a hug a shake do it quickly tell him i wish you good luck in today's ride doesn't matter how the the plane goes be sure we will land we must land before the grace hallelujah First Peter 3 verse 7. First Peter 3 7.
while I was preparing this note, I was laughing. I was already imagining some of you. You know, one day, I, I, am I? Sometimes I feel like I'm a clown on stage. When I'm trying to be serious, some of you are really laughing. Likewise, ye husbands. Don't say I'm not married. You will be married. So listen. Likewise, ye husbands. Dwell with them who? The wives. Okay, if you read the preceding verses. Dwell with them according to... All the brothers read it. One, two, read. Likewise. Who are the husbands? Likewise, us, we men. We will dwell with them according to... So the Bible says you live with a woman according to... It didn't say according to love. Are you following me now? Look, when it comes to women, you, oh, you can coexist according to... How many of you have roommates that you love, but you know next session, you are certainly not going to stay together? Do you hate them? But there is no knowledge. No wonder it's ladies that are raising their hands. The brothers can manage. The ladies cannot take it again. Because it takes knowledge to dwell with a woman. Ladies can be as complicated as laptops. I was thinking of what to say. My mind was booting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I want to talk about a few... Listen, please. What I want to talk about right now is very important. Please. If you are sleeping now, it's the time to wake up. Listen very carefully with your eyes, your spirit, your mind, whatever you can use to listen. I want to talk about something. Everybody write. Emotional obsession. Very interesting word. We are going to discuss it. Emotional obsession. We are talking of maintaining your relationship now or maintaining your marriage. Look up please. 90% of relationships, including Christian relationships, 90% of believers enter relationships among other reasons because of what I call emotional obsession. You know what an emotional obsession is? An emotional obsession is that, that feeling huh? brother that is like how do I describe it now songs of Solomon says love is stronger than death that's the kind of feeling where out of your whole 24 hours the best is the 5 minutes you were able to speak with the sister so 2 guys 1 brother 1 lady quick Ella come and stand quickly who Abel, appreciate them quickly. Please come and stand, my brother, stand. So, Abel, Elijah, sorry, it doesn't matter. I'm you, uh, it's an example. Am I calling him? Elijah, oh yeah. Now, Elijah has been attending Koinonia. He knows that she's in prayer band. And now, Elijah is praying. Elijah is before him. Elijah cannot sleep. You wake up by three and you're just sitting down. Elijah, what is wrong? He said, truly, me too. I don't know. You call every one of your roommates Ella. Sorry, um, Ella, Sam. Sorry. This, this is called... It's not wrong. Are you listening to me? It's not wrong. Emotional obsession. Or oh, she... she she wakes up by 3 o'clock in the night and picks her biro and on her pillow she's now drawing flowers people are sleeping there's no light you are using your phone drawing flowers oh we know it oh. we don't need to come to your hostel to know it
Then you draw a hand, Elijah's hand, collecting the flower. And that's that drive. You come for fellowship, you are sweating, you've not seen Ella. Ah, Sam is, you are covering my view, Sam. You are just looking around. If per adventure you see Elijah, you come early, but you sit down outside. You are waiting until the arrival of Ella, and then you start laughing. That's when your, your praise and worship becomes living full of life full of power they say greet your neighbor you've not greeted the people around you you've gone hello how are you even you can't help it you can it's a fuel that you cannot quench hallelujah now listen and this is most for ladies because you see it takes a long time for ladies to arrive there. Guys get that easily. As easy as it comes, it just goes. You are in a dinner and you look at Ella and you are like, Hey! God, talk to me or I will talk to you. Talk to me or I will talk. Somebody must talk to somebody this night. Hallelujah. Then one morning you are passing and you just see the lady in the morning. And she just pack her hair anyhow. And you are like, ah! God, please don't say anything. Is this the lady? So, that this emotional obsession is very impulsive in guys it takes a while for it to crystallize in ladies but when it catches them hallelujah i'm sure they know themselves that's why they run away the moment they start seeing any guy because they know what can happen it's like super glue you will sit down there when he catches you free bus transport going on uh, after after the grace go you would trek not because you there was no space in the bus you were waiting has she gone ross and the guy there's always a witness helping you and encouraging you you say oh yeah you just do a see he's looking at the protocol and he's just looking and he comes he's around yeah yeah go down emotional obsession now this is powerful because it's really the distinguishing factor. It's what helps you listen. See, look at two guys shaking themselves. I saw two of you. I saw you. And I congratulate you for shaking yourselves. I wish you a safe ride, safe journey. We'll be ready to help you wherever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, please understand. This emotional obsession is very powerful because that's what can make a brother to use his money for lunch and buy a recharge card and be patient sleep is drowsing his eyes but he's praying waiting for five minutes past 12. the guy is just strolling his roommates are starving they bought gary he kept his own money it's called obsession where the energy came from you were not fasting but you've not eaten yet you are not bothered you are not bothered five minutes past 12 your eyes will just clear you just start flashing hoping that the lady will flash back once the lady flashes back whether mtn whether there's network or no network if there is only one spot near your room even if it's a window you stand like this you can stand later you find out ah, five minutes to four you are just hissing this thing is entering you here coming out here it's called obsession At least since it does not happen for every lady or every guy, it helps you to be able to narrow down your decision and it helps you know that you are making a good decision. Are you following me? But the trouble is this. Most guys or most ladies really, that's why about 90% of ladies enter a relationship and two weeks later they feel like going out. You know why? Because emotional obsession cannot be the fuel for your relationship are you following me now let me tell you something every relationship including between you and jesus christ every kind of relationship at a point must take faith and a factor other than just your emotions to sustain it are you hearing what i'm saying very important now hold her Two of you are going out. Let's assume it has worked for you now. Finally, doesn't matter what happened in between. The long 
and short is now this has worked they are going out suddenly this brother now starts reducing his time from one one hour 45 minutes 15 minutes and it just stops at the 10 minutes mark and this lady is busy asking herself come on is that how it's happening in your own relationship because i don't understand these guys who so guys are very funny before we started going out he used to call me for 30 minutes but now i don't i can't understand why it's only two or three minutes let me tell you something most ladies love the euphoria and the excitement you took her to mr biggs every week you ensured that money came out faith was working every koinonia message on faith produced for you you forced it to work there was one one thousand every week here marked for maintaining this process but now that it has happened you have suddenly gassed out that energy is not there one day the lady just tries and said ah, how about that chicken? have you eaten mr big chicken for a while say, oh, please don't we're trying to conserve resources right here as if you didn't know it before so the the issue of emotional obsession listen this is why many relationships this is why western people cannot stay three days or one week are you following me now as quickly as they enter they pack their loads and go the reason is because the only factor was emotional obsession so the guy entered and you saw this posh guy eh? he was he was a lamborghini that dropped him ladies don't pretend like what i'm saying is not making sense the guy just comes out and now you are just looking what they call it tall dark and handsome very nice guy and now you are looking pinching your friend immediately the guy says can he come for before he finishes he say oh, my pleasure two weeks later i hate this guy guys are wicked i hate them calm down this night we are going to explain what is really wrong what's the problem everybody say emotional obsession emotional obsession is good but there is a level if you allow that to govern your relationship or to show whether your relationship is working or not you are going to get into trouble ask any married man a time comes where what is fueling them is commitment it's, it's not just emotional obsession I saw my father annoy my mother in a way that I knew if he was my mother that would be it I will call a pastor and say we need your attention in this family yet my mother will go and cook the, the, the insult has not finished oh. the whole bag bag is still on and she will be serving him when she finishes she will sit down and continue the argument Ah, that, that, that cannot be obsession hallelujah what's your son name ah give us an english name okay elijah let's assume you are mr elijah now you finish cheering yourself cheering yourself cheering yourself and people see her and say ah mrs elijah say how are you how is your husband fine yet you have not finished so you are going back let me tell you something brothers and sisters many people especially unbelievers have based their relationship on that tingly feeling that feeling of obsession he's the only person in your world she's the only person in your world hallelujah you have exams tomorrow by three you are still together the exam is by eight you know you will pass the lady says please i care about you it's academics what eh I, I i can make it i've been making it in this school i've been making it don't spoil this atmosphere right I, I, it will work just don't worry god is faithful it's like fire you can't help it you can't explain it hallelujah and then for many people when they get into the relationship or they get married after a while there are many names that the guy used to call you he found greek and hebrew names just for you shining star 
What again? What are the names? Ladies, tell me the names the guys call you. Oh yeah. What? Princess? Every lady's name is princess and angel. They like it. My name is angel. My name is princess. So the guys call all of those names. They are they are ways of trying to manage that fire at the moment. The time you just call and say, Ella, it's time for fellowship. Oh, let's go. She said, ah, what is wrong? Say, please, is he your name or not your name? Did your father give you the name? And now Ella is beginning to be worried. Is it that this guy doesn't love me again? Hallelujah. Please, are you following me now? Emotional obsession is good, but relationship cannot be sustained just from the emotional realm. Are you listening to me? Many people believe you get your relationship by that tingly feeling and you feel the more I keep feeling so obsessed. That's what happens to white men. Two weeks after their relationship, they find out that that fire, that fervency is not there. And they just say, we are not meant for each other. Now they go to look for another person. So, they are allowing that obsession. And this is the problem that some of you have. You are, you are allowing your emotional obsession to be the governing factor. It's like a thermometer that helps you to know whether your relationship or your marriage is working or not. If that's what you are using, Satan will deceive you big time. Are you listening to me? So, have you understood emotional obsession now? Commitment. Everybody write. Commitment. Okay, leave yourselves again. Look up. This is a very dangerous word. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Commitment is not a very nice word if you understand all that it entails. Let me tell you the truth commitment many people run away from this word called commitment hallelujah there are many guys today and many ladies today who the reason why they are not in relationships is because they are afraid of commitment you know what commitment is commitment entails sacrifice many guys and ladies alike are not willing to pay that sacrifice of commitment don't let anybody fool you genuine relationship takes sacrifice you will forgo a lot of things some relationships and marriages will even change you it will change you ask our mothers and they will tell you any woman who is married here will agree with me it will change you i remember years ago two of our, our members got married and one time we went for somebody else's wedding and the lady who got married is a very playful lady she likes jumping she can jump up and down and play hallelujah now she was married and then she saw some of our other sisters who were not married they were jumping and playing and you could see it pushing her i mean she wanted to join i saw the way it was eating her up but no way there was a ring in her hand that was telling her behave behave Everybody say commitment entails sacrifice. Many people do not want to pay that sacrifice to maintain your relationship, to maintain your marriage. It's what is very difficult for many people. Commitment entails contentment. Everybody say contentment. That's the reason why a man can marry, a woman can marry. There are men and women today who do not know what they want. Ten years after marriage, they are still looking around and changing. They lack contentment. Everybody say contentment. You know what contentment is? Contentment is getting to a point where you derive fulfillment and satisfaction. A Lamborghini is good. A Porsche sign is good. Hallelujah. What other car again? Tell me one more. Don't mention anything you are not sure of. A Bentley is good. 
But you see, you can have your CRV and be contented. Are you listening to me? Contentment is very important. The Bible says, Proverbs 31, 31, it says, Many daughters have done excellently, but thou excellest them all. Many people like contentment. They lack it in life. That's why nothing can be enough. There are people in life you can never please. They, they always want more. They are never satisfied. Hallelujah. This is the problem with many relationships. There are many relationships that are not contented. And let me tell you something. If you find yourself talking to the guy or the lady, many people like comparing relationships. It's a terrible thing. Never do that. Hold our hands again. Two of you are going out. Say, Elijah, you used to wear nice suits before. Why do you one that you are looking like? You are embarrassing me. Oh, it has been paining me today. I'm saying it. Hallelujah. And then suddenly, who is with suit again? Sam, stand up. Now, she's already been dissatisfied with Elijah. Why? Because he didn't used to wear the suit she used to know him to wear before. Do you know that if you do not have contentment, little things can take away your passion? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Suddenly, Sam is coming with his suit. Elijah, you're in trouble. Oh, there's fire on the mountain. Elijah doesn't know. Elijah doesn't know why her commitment is not. She's already seen Sam. See Sam's shirt. Two colors. In her heart, she has met Sam already. Oh. Elijah is there smiling. This is how many people are. Listen, listen, listen. This is very important. In life, can I tell you something? Brothers, get it straight. Even if you get the best lady you believe right now, you will see somebody better than her one day. By every standard, true or false. Sisters, you will see Prince Charming in Koinonia. And may God help you go somewhere. Hey, you will see Prince Charming plus. You will see another prince charming that will make you not to sleep. Many of us have this craving that cannot say enough. Not just for relationship. You have a car. You have your small golf. You are starting small. The day you see somebody's bends, it's as if you should squeeze your golf and just throw it away. They say, whose car is this? They say, uh, please, what is your business? Can't you see things and leave it? To come and say, this is my golf. I bought it. It's a fruit of hard work. 500,000 with faith on top is what brought me this golf. One day I would, I would turn this golf into a, a Bentley. But for now, this is golf. This is what many of us, many of us, many of us, you are in a relationship. God bless you, Sam. The lady cannot speak English very well. You too, you came from the village. So it was not a big deal. You just connected. Suddenly you found out that your CGPA was doing well. And you had a brother who stayed in UK as your roommate. And eventually metamorphosis, orientation. Your, your, your village English is being changed and polished. And now you can speak Queen's English. You, you can speak all the oral English and everything. Hallelujah. Suddenly you start looking at the lady. And in your mind, you are like, ah, God, I don't know how to manage this thing now. Our levels have changed. So. Hallelujah. Now you don't know how to tell this sister and say, Tor, we came from the same village. Yes. As at the time I met you, two of us were managing in the same realm. But maybe you gave me scholarship. I went to UK for three months. Or for PhD or this. And now I'm back from the UK. So I can't relate with you again. Nonsense. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was told that. The, what was the name of that Nigerian lady who got Miss Walt? The guy who was going out with her. The moment 
she qualified for international this and the guy just left he just knew that there's there's no point wasting time this is how many of us are you lack contentment you can never say enough you just turn and you see another lady with nice Yvonne. sister please stand up you uh-huh see her beautiful Yvonne, and you just look suddenly you look at her like say, you you don't do Yvonne. Eh? Yeah? it's dangerous because many people think marriage will solve that problem i assure you it won't solve it that's why you can see a man in a car when he's with maybe his daughter's friend he's smiling how are you where is your father but when he's with his wife you will know what of the the fuel did they bring it he's driving you know she's saying yes she's turning her face commitment everybody say commitment number three commitment entails patience patience one of the greatest shocker for people in relationship is that when they enter they suddenly find out that all you saw in the guy or the lady is not all there is it's a rude shock hallelujah Commitment entails tolerance. Many of you are not tolerant at all. Look up, please. Now, let me say something. Many people enter relationship with their idea of what it should look like. Hallelujah. Some of you have been so battered by the complex you grew up with that your relationship is a revenge mission. You didn't tell the guy but you have been so psychologically whipped that you have sworn to yourself that this guy is that donkey that Jesus used to ride. He said, brother, are you willing? You kept asking the guy, do you truly love me? The guy didn't understand. He said, yes. You truly love Yes. The brother didn't wait. He said, okay, well, let's do After one month, nobody tells the brother, the guy is dying. His pocket money has finished savings finish he has sold his laptop he sold his blackberry his other shoe he has sold it in your mind you are saying you've not seen anything no you better keep selling i went through a lot of pain we didn't eat meat in our house i'm revenging so you better there are many ladies that your concept of relationship is a revenge all the things you've gone through all the names they called you you will ride on that brother until he knows that he asks you out and you believe that your beauty is a consolation for all this pain one day like a donkey the brother will just die brother will say this thing i'm not doing it again hallelujah it gets bad when your family joins in the ride. The mother says, let's ride. Oh. You said the guy is purpose driven. Oh yeah. Ask him to send some money. You have not married the girl. Yet they said there's one contribution they are doing somewhere. Ah. The brother is saying, do they know me? He says, shall I bring it? How much? 15,000, 5,000 my own transport. The guy now goes to ask Pastor Jake and say, if somebody is in a relationship, and the family is already asking him to bring money is he right there are many people listen listen please that's why it's good to think well though. it's good to think well there are some families that are suffering they are crying for a savior if you are coming to be that savior hear god first hear god first there are families that things are not working well i tell you things are not working well they need a man to help them you you just came i'm that man the mother looked at you the day you came can you carry it before they finish say yes you carry it now you are dying the load is killing you you know we counsel people so we know the things that we hear hallelujah ladies 
relationship is not a revenge mission please don't say i've been feeling calm i've, I've suffered inferiority complex now this guy the guy wants to spend 10 minutes with god you're already angry the bible says whatever god has joined what is all that must he go with you you came late for a program he's sitting in front you are frowning why didn't he sit with me ah, ah. this is insecurity hallelujah and many of you do not know there are there are there are there are people who when they are in a relationship like this especially certain guys suddenly when you see ella just whisper something to jakes you are not talking to her again no? what did you tell jakes what did you tell him that you couldn't tell me and the lady said no 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 look at the bible says the bible saw the what i've been watching you that's how you told this guy the other day you said this and that and that and then same with ladies a sister comes to ask somebody who has been helping her before you even came and now the brother just calls her corners her gives her one thousand the ladies she will do as if oh ladies can see they will pretend they didn't see it even if they didn't see their friends oh yeah i see immediately you see they'll turn it's during their regular regular what meeting the issue will come up say in this relationship we are not honest with one another the brother will say really say we are not honest god knows there's no honesty in this thing when people are giving people money how can there be honesty who are the people who are the other people they gave we don't know Say me, I won't talk again. I don't want trouble. You have already spoken. The trouble is there already. Mm. Hallelujah. Commitment entails responsibility. Listen, look at me. There are many people that love koinonia. You love koinonia. But the moment they say, um, why don't you join a department? Once you hear anything that will commit you, you are finding your way. There is a beautiful dinner coming up. Next week, you are smiling. The price is, aha, uh -huh, commitment. Anything, there are people who, especially guys, brother, if you are still afraid of commitment, don't ever, if you are seeing any lady in your dream, stop it. Stop it. Stop seeing her. Because you are only playing. There are many brothers here. They, they are not committed. Have you seen people like that? There's nothing that is worth their time and their attention. They want to be average in everything. Small here, small here. So long as it doesn't commit me. Hallelujah. You say I'm in prayer department. But you say, what, what kind of members are in prayer department? I dare, me, I'll just be coming when I want to. I hope you are not offended. Why wouldn't you be committed? Everybody wants things that, you say I'm in welfare. But the thing is that, the nature of my life is that there are times when I may not be around. Let me tell you, there is nothing good that happens in life without commitment. Is that correct? You are seeing the worship people standing. This is commitment. It's not like they don't know how to sit. Many of you, you run away from anything that will bring responsibility. Hallelujah. You are in a relationship with the lady. One day she just says, sorry, yo, please don't think I'm materialistic. I've not spoken with my mother for a while. Can you help me with five? Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. She has not mentioned. Aha. Uh -huh. See you. Joshua Selman said, people should not be disturbing us. You are the kind of, Abba. 500 naira for the charge card. Greedy and stingy people hate commitment because it will require them to give out something. Greedy people. That's why they don't have many friends. They don't like anything. Don't come and say, we're having a get together. Everybody bring money. Uh -uh. Or bring as the spirit leads. They don't like that kind of thing. 
commitment listen every marriage i know of that has worked did not just work because of emotions are you listening to me we are going to be very practical today have you seen a man and his wife a man who has accident for instance in the course of their marriage and he's now confided on wheelchair and the wife is still standing and they are celebrating their anniversary together and the wife is saying if God gives us another life I will marry you my brother my sister this cannot be emotion are you understanding what I'm saying it, it cannot be emotion the day the guy fought with somebody they blew his eyes suddenly you came and saw somebody with one dark eye your friend he was coming you just turn and tell your friends ah please let me I'm, I'm sorry I have to run somewhere you are a child you have not you are not ready for marriage is this kind of secondary school thing people do hallelujah many of you feel embarrassed at just any little thing rain beats the guy he just entered somewhere and he's smiling they're like ah this guy is falling my hand you better you better stop it he's taking you out all the money he has is what can sponsor two of you the remaining change is 100 or 200 i say let's enter boss and now while you are entering you see other people in their relationship the guy just turn just does hunt for you out of a sincere heart to just say hello the lady is just getting uncomfortable in the bus ah sweet i was wrong please you are already embarrassed you want the guy to go and steal so that he will make you happy many ladies have led our brothers into unbelievable things because they think they want to protect their image that's why many ladies want guys that they can control some of you even say it proudly you better repent this night did you hear what i said change repent say i like a guy my own guy everybody will sit down everybody is talking about their own. my own guy yo I can flash him now now and he will flash me back if I tell him I'm not happy right now it's 15 text messages I'll get before I sleep and if you dare me I will do it you are using the guy like a caricature and you are smiling God is watching God will pick him and give somebody who deserves him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I assure you. Stop it. Your relationship is not a revenge mission. Yes, we know you suffered growing up. Manage your, your, your predicaments. That's why you receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody say, I receive grace to be committed. I receive grace to be committed because there are many of you the kind of man or woman you are looking for has not yet been born with the 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 attitude you have I assure you the person has not been born hallelujah you are not willing to sacrifice anything you are not willing to be patient you are not willing to build most of us want ready-made relationships ready-made unfortunately there's nothing called ready-made relationship you can look at her and like her you've not seen her when she's angry you've not seen her when she's broke you've not seen her when she's under pressure you too you have not seen him he's wearing nice suits now you don't know what happens when he CGA pierce nose diving you don't know what he can become that's why you need God. I hear what I'm saying. See, let me tell you something. This is why I personally believe that campus relationship is one of the best kinds of relationship. You know why? Because at that point, you see the brother when he wakes up, you see his drowsy eyes. There's nothing that is hidden. He can't lie for long. You've seen the shoe. You followed him to the shoemaker to help and patch it. So you know that this guy doesn't have much. You were the one who helped him to bargain. 
the, the 500 naira material you beg the tailor to sew it for him so your love is genuine because it's not tied to anything that's why many people many people who already become blessed and wealthy hardly make good marital decisions which lady will not want a guy who let me tell you something some people are, some ladies have suffered who we'll talk about it once you enter 300 level your mother calls you ella come here she come and sit here come now ella say ella what did we eat day before yesterday beans what did we eat yesterday beans what did we eat today i didn't have the opportunity to enjoy what you can enjoy what i'm trying to say is this a rich man is better than a poor man leave all those campus promising brothers look at nigeria no jobs what is the guarantee when do you want to marry say next year say find somebody that looks like next year don't find somebody that doesn't look like it's not like i'm telling you not to choose or i wouldn't choose for when they're already choosing for you hallelujah are you learning something this night so ella now comes and begins to scout one promising serious brother in decoration you are serving labor in the house of god but all you have is the promise of god no manifestation yet you just come to ella and say um ella i uh <laughs> they don't even think about it oh. i know where you are going let me help you get there you are wasting your time oh, because of what the mother has already told her so she's scouting around looking for this pushed military officer in in Jaji, or army officer or director in bank and every time she enters uba she's just smiling at the staff because you want to please your mother and then 10 years later you have not married and then you come and see that brother that you used to see his shoe when he's praying in koinonia because he doesn't want it to tear he will remove it and keep it but he's praying he's fasting later you see the guy drop from his car and look and say ah i know you now and you're like yes sir i know you too i know you i know you i know where i met you sir says have you married he says, ah this is my little junior come You are, you are in for it this night oh brothers appreciate me if i'm helping you mm. hallelujah we're still talking about commitment many people run away from commitment many people we hate commitments in the house of god commitment to your friends commitment to your family commitment to your work say i receive grace to be committed hallelujah please celebrate them hallelujah emotional obsession is not enough i hope you've learned that now because there are some of you who are wondering is my relationship is in nose diving but then you will find out that this tingly emotional feeling is not all there is to relationship you will grow up and you will begin to take the burden of love the burden of responsibility hallelujah you take last your father will whip you Yet you will go to the bank to withdraw school fees. He will talk and say, Me, may God punish me if I pay your school fees. But before resumption, he brings the receipt. Where are you? Come. If you like, go back to school. Yet he said, May God punish me. I said, He even forgot the burden of love. Hallelujah. Very important. So how many of you are learning something now the third thing i want you to know about maintaining relationships 
We spoke about emotional obsession that as good as it is, it's not enough. Number two, commitment. We spoke about commitment. Your commitment must be beyond your emotions to sustain any marriage. Must be far beyond a determination. Number three, communication. And this is where we will dwell seriously today. Everybody say communication. Hallelujah. How many of you have read the book Five Love Languages? Let me see your hands. How many of you have read any book on relationship and marriage? Aside from married people. You see what we are saying? Look at me. What you do not place value for, you will not excel in. Are you listening to me? Whatever you do not, whatever you do not respect leaves you. Whatever you appreciate comes to you. So I'll take an extra from five love languages when it comes to communication. Hallelujah. Please look up. Hold on. Gary Chapman, in his years of research about marriage and relationship, why homes work and why homes do not work, came up with what he called five love languages. Look up, please. Now, a love language talks of a, a means of communication. Are you listening to me? The way and manner to which people want love expressed to them so that they can feel its effect. Are you listening to me? I can love you. Eh? Are you following me? I can love you, but until you are convinced. That means I must find ways of relating that love in a way that it relates to your realm. Is that correct? Are you following me? And this is what Gary Chapman called love languages. In his research, he found out that many relationships were broken and many homes were broken because the couple or the spouses did not know how to communicate love to one another. Are you following me now? And so he found out in his years and decades of counseling that honestly, many couples that were fighting in homes actually loved themselves. But what they lacked was the art of communicating the love. Are you following me now? To one another in a way that they would interpret it as love. Now, um, Come, my dear. I was looking for a lady with this kind of hair. Come. Now, if I look at this lady, are you listening to me? And I look at her, and I say, ah, see your multicolored hair. Do you know, I may say it as a means of expressing that I like it, correct? But she can receive it as an insult. Have I communicated love to her? But do I love her? Are you, are you getting me now? So I come and say, see your multicolored hair. This is supposed, in my own thinking, this is a beautiful compliment. When I expected a hug, where's your hand? What is A slap. If you don't like the hair, tell me to change it. Don't insult me like that. Bless you. Five love languages. Number one, he found out that now all of these love languages are applicable to everybody, but there is what we call the primary love language. The primary love language is the best and most effective means that an individual interprets, receives the feeling of love. Are you following me now? Number one, words of affirmation. Whether you've read the book, write it. Gary Chapman found out that there were many men that what they wanted was words or men and women words of affirmation. I will explain them very quickly. Number two, acts of service. Acts of service from the Acts of the Apostles, acts of service. Media, if you can help us. Words of affirmation. 
that's number one love language number two acts of service number three receiving gifts receiving gifts am i too fast number four quality time quality time and number five physical touch start it start that one start it and follow me number one words of affirmation number two acts of service number three receiving gifts number four what quality time five physical touch look up please gary chapman in his in his in his research found out that almost every human being had one of these as his primary or her primary love language what is word a uh, word of affirmation this is mostly strong for men look up please for many men words of affirmation is their primary love language two people again oh yeah now you and somebody sweetheart come don't be afraid don't worry bless you stand here you stand here words of affirmation listen men are visionary men are purpose driven are you listening to me so words of i'm sorry words of affirmation is that assuming this is a husband and a wife and she's telling him she's saying look sweetheart i know that our finances is not in the best position right now but do you know that the man that i met is more visionary than the man that i'm seeing now this guy is broke you are suffering there's no food at home but now he's depressed words of affirmation you are telling him look like you always used to tell us we are coming out of this do you still believe it i believe in you remember when you said god told you that this ministry will blossom the guy just nods what are you doing you are speaking his primary language of love you are affirming are you following me now it's an affirmation you are letting him know that i believe in you and i'm not letting circumstances dictate it food may not be in the house but i'm ready to stand by you words of affirmation and suddenly this guy looks and he says look even if we come back in another planet you is you that i'll marry again that's why you see some guys go through hell and high water as soon as they come out they marry the girl that was there for them straight even if she was a villager because as far as they are concerned that was the person who was able to speak their love language hallelujah rain wash jordan bookstore for instance and everybody's just sending texts oh god jordan god help you and then one sister comes and says jordan how can i help look something like this happened to my brother and so i can understand ha! jordan won't sleep jordan won't sleep jordan will just smile i didn't know you will answer me this way i didn't know you will answer me this way she just spoke his love language everybody say words of affirmation very few ladies have words of affirmation as their primary love language but they do number two acts of service there are many people that are obsessed about receiving a helping hand especially ladies hallelujah so this lady is is, is walking in the kitchen eh? put your hands here you are walking in the kitchen you are washing plates now you put the other hand you wash plates with one hand that's right now she's she's washing plates and then this guy how many of you know this kind of big cd in our house that you just touch something and then your father is just listening to his reggae remembering his days and the mother is just sweating and angry in the kitchen first she starts singing hymns the song is playing loud but she's singing 
What a friend we have in Jesus. She's angry. Your father doesn't know. Because her primary love language may be acts of service. Martha in the Bible had her primary love language as the act of service. That's why she was angry when Mary left her just walking and she, at a point she couldn't hide it. She came to Jesus and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, Jesus wasn't the thing. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. There are people who are obsessed about receiving a helping hand. I've seen people like that, guys and ladies. So now you come and meet her and you say, um, can I help you? Can I help you wash the plate? She says no. Honestly, she will tell you no. But her satisfaction is that you were able to speak her love language. That you came to show her a helping hand. Are you following me now? Very important. A lady can be holding a book. You say, let me help you. She will still give you the book. You'll be wondering now, wow, what kind of arrogant lady? She may not be arrogant. It's her primary love language. Are you following me now? That's why there can be a beehive of guys around her. But it's the person who can speak her love language. The race is not to the swift, though. The battle is not to the strong. Somebody is buying Mr. Biggs. Buying Mr. Biggs. She will carry the Mr. Biggs and be sharing it with the brother that is doing acts of service for her. You say, somebody was generous to me. One brother brought Mr. Biggs. Can we eat together? We've been working together. She got a room off key. The guy came to help her. Humble, they were sweeping together. Ah ah. Later, she will stop and be looking. Ah, she's seen her husband. The other guy is just sending Mr. Biggs. She will call that guy and say, Kai, I was sweeping my room today. The guy said, Really? That means you're hungry. Say, eh, well, it not immediately it comes. They will share it with her real husband. That's why some of you guys have been suffering because you don't know the road to the city number three receiving gifts now look up please this is very important there are many people who are obsessed about receiving gifts especially ladies it's not materialism it's their love language hallelujah how many of you have seen ladies every time you are traveling say what will you get for me i tell you that's a big sign that receiving gifts is their love is their primary love language and truly you think they are playing you will carry your big mouth and say i will buy chicken I will. you think they will forget when you come they are looking at many things they are just looking at what looks like chicken around your hand you didn't bring it you find out that they are suddenly edgy they are angry they are not cooperating what happened hallelujah they love it they love gifts it's not about the cost even if it's one sweet you just say guess what what's your name regina beautiful name regina i just bought one eckless eckless or tom 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 self. she doesn't have kata but she say really ha kai that was so touching five naira five naira but that's her love language that's the guy's love language there are guys like that there are men of God like that. Their love language is you must come with something. If not, the anointing will not be stirred up. They must receive something. Number four, let's run. Quality time. Aha. Quality time. Hold on now. Husband and wife. Now, quality time is so important. Hallelujah. Businessmen, pilots, soldiers, oil company workers, pastors, listen, accountants, students, time. And this is not just ladies. There are guys that want time like ladies. So, there are people this is their primary love language now this guy is offshore two weeks two weeks is drilling oil for nigeria you are drilling oil you are drilling oil this lady is there 
once they spend one day they don't see you that time their body starts they are obsessed about time there are ladies like that the guy says um i'll come and see you in two hours even if it's accident that happened and he got even if it's accident he's bringing the trouser that tore. say see i brought this to explain you see i, I changed trouser she said I'm, I'm not hearing anything no you're on your own because the way you have been behaving this relationship tear the guy up and down the guy has to prepare a special atmosphere that will repay what would have happened and now says I just wanted you to know that I'm at the dam now. I'm waiting for you. Say, eh, which part of the dam? Aha. Attention. Time. With who? No, I'm alone. I'm alone. Alone and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Say, me, I want to sleep now. And the guy say, Haba, I did all this for you. So, yeah, I'm coming. She will drop it and start smiling. Start doing all her foundation. Put everything. Do everything. You're on your way running. And then when you get there, you are happy because he's speaking your love language. Physical touch. I said you should start it too. The reason is because, please look up. And I must say this, we are Christians. The emotional nature, please listen. I say this all the time. I know there are some of you who just frown and say, please, Jerry, all these people you are trying to many of these books you read you see in america a guy can go out with this lady and be having a french kiss with her christians they love god in the presence of her parents and they'll be happy oh dear they'll be remembering their own but the problem is because of the please listen this is important the context of our culture are you listening to me and the effect because we are emotional beings by the time there are many ladies that are obsessed and guys too their primary love language is touch now when i talk of touch i'm not talking of immorality they are not bad honestly they are not corrupt are you following me now they like hugging this is a hugging generation there are times that we are counseling ladies and as soon as they come you see bishop do it sometimes here or jakes when they come they are trying to fight their tears and what happens the love language of a touch if your mind is not if your mind has a problem with it please just come for counseling because the bible says to the pure all things are pure there are some of you that anything in your mind say how can a guy stand yet please i beg please let's let's learn first hallelujah are you listening to me very important now of course i'm not saying in a relationship you have to say see you minimum distance this is how we are no but but listen you must be careful look up please are you learning are we christians here yeah? are we christians please everything we are saying is within the jurisdiction of the kingdom i don't know what you have learned from nigerian films but we are christians this is a lady you are physically attracted to is that true please answer me is that true now ah, see we are human beings so you are a man no you are a woman no be careful hallelujah by the time you start doing some funny things like saying okay you want to laugh this lady even if a bible is in front of two of you and you are doing bible study there's trouble it may not happen that day but be sure you're on the way to destruction i know what i'm saying will offend some of you it doesn't make sense but let me tell you help yourself praise god what did i say help yourself so try to minimize 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 the love language of touch when you are married back your wife and go out with her that's your back her Go out with her. That's your cup of tea. Let everybody know that two of you, your love language is touch. At least you are married. But that you are single. And then some things, you and the person may know you are pure. But you see the report before men. 
especially if you are a leader are you listening? are you following me very important there are some things you do they may not be wrong in themselves but the effect the message it can pass to other people is what is very dangerous and you must have that staying power to help us hallelujah are you getting blessed so if your love language is the touch please receive grace from god and understand that it will be minimized until marriage hallelujah when you get married against such there's no law sleep with yourself from morning till night back back you that's your cup of tea do whatever you want to do but for now that you are not married help yourself so that you will marry willingly happily and honorably hallelujah so that they won't force you and say okay you have demonstrated to us your willingness to marry in two weeks therefore prepare and do everything please avoid such kind of things because it will make you to hate the person that you are supposed to spend the rest of your life with is somebody hearing this so if you have been in a relationship or if you are married that's okay you are exempted from all this but if you are in a relationship there are some of you that do funny things you just stand i i saw one guy around social center and he was i can't even begin to describe what i saw around that place where they park and i know that lady i'm sure she's a christian lady kai he was too extreme eh whether your love language whatever your love is too extreme please christians are we together you're angry abby i will say it i'm not going to stop it it's too much you are doing as if they will steal the woman be careful if you can't whatever is pursuing you go and meet her parents it's too much some things believers do around i know some of you will not be it's too bad guys come to ladies hostel or come at, it's, it's too it's too intimate it's too expressive see you may not go to hell but you are certainly not going to live a fruitful life because that thing is leading you into trouble i'm telling you this take what i'm saying very seriously do you know when your touch for a lady becomes excessive she starts fading and getting cheap before you are you listening to me there is no no expectancy again ladies there are some of you anybody can touch you anywhere anyhow anytime you don't mind you are just smiling sheepishly guys will keep changing you and you are just around social center you are around anywhere you just run 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 climb the guy's back and you are laughing he will drop you the other one will carry you what kind of wife do you want to become open your eyes open your ears then you'll understand that the lord is here open your eyes would you open your ears and then you'll understand that the lord that you just enter a relationship before you know it you are ah, come on, no. and brothers there are some of you that are shameless may god grant you grace to be disciplined in jesus name say amen some of you behave as if you are not christians you are not the first to enter a relationship you will not be the last people have held themselves for years or oh god what is pursuing you behave yourself you are just around the lady as if you are as if he's a fly and anybody hey, no, no, what do you want Abba. and there are ladies look at me sisters i'm talking to you now because there are many guys here that got into certain things because of the pressure that the ladies mount many ladies your love language is physical touch be careful what did i say what did i say oh 
manage yourself i know that biologically speaking there are many biological and psychological reasons as to why ladies will want touch as their primary love language but let me tell you this is why the spirit of god comes are you hearing me you are not an unbeliever you are a christian it is because of physical touch that many people have gotten into pornography hear me please masturbation homosexualism are you following me now lesbianism i will say it all internet pornography and you have done many unthinkable things because of the vulnerability of the human body to the touch this is why you must be careful i'm warning you now be careful i'm speaking to you see my heart and see the love i'm a human being too but i'm telling you be careful so that you will get married happily and honorably praise the lord is that possible is that possible for a christian yes how do you make that possible discuss it see when you enter a relationship the boundaries you don't discuss you will cross discuss it tell him oh, me honestly the way i am see i once counseled a lady years ago listen i found out that this lady was so obsessed about physical touch and i knew she was a christian and she loved god and it was it was getting to, ah it was too much she can want to hug you and fly on you you know how superman does as in fly on mercilessly as in this kind loosely and carelessly you know that this one has crossed the boundary by far and i found out that ah, what is there must be something wrong and then i got to find out that she had a medical condition of hormonal imbalance are you following me now this was what was response she did it she had an unusual craving for touch and we had to put this lady under careful surveillance so that we gather against wolves in sheep's <laughs> clothing because there are some let me tell you the church has all kinds of brothers so sometimes that's why you see us guard our sister sometimes when we see you coming around and you are being too careless we'll tell you behave please we are watching behave behave hallelujah bless you bless you sir. everybody said five love languages how do you know your partner's love language by their consistent complaints right their consistent complaint is a sign that you are not responding to their love language. You say, every time you travel, you don't used to think about me. Every time you travel, that's how you leave me alone. Even a flash, aha, quality time. She's speaking her love language to you. If you are smart, get it, note it, and start responding. Hallelujah. Praise God. Very important. Look at me. When you see a lady start talking about, can we go to church together? Can we sit together? Can we, they say, high five your neighbor. She's looking at you and hoping you look at her back. You high five somebody else, you will explain it. Sooner or later, she won't forget it. That's, that's touch there. Are you following me? Or a lady that informs you the day you give her this thing, she informs you about the date of her next birthday right away so that you start preparing. Ah, that's, that's receiving gifts there. Brothers, have you been sensitive? Ladies, have you been sensitive? You see this guy walking all the time. He tells you, I have a building project. I've been trying to build. You just land and look at him and say, you didn't even see my wevon. What of words of affirmation? Why don't you speak his love language? That's why you can see a guy will look at the girl and say, you're a selfish lady. Or a guy will look at a visionary brother and say, you are very selfish. The guy's hand is like this. Aha, receiving gifts. This is not quality time. If you see ladies and this guy, his hand is like this. Like his big head, his hand is like that. Receiving gifts. Hallelujah. 
Let me give you an assignment. Do it in one minute right now. Everybody, write your love language. Find it. You know it. Some of you are laughing. Some of you say all. It's a lie. It's a lie. No matter what health issue you have, you have only one love language. Don't say, yeah, me too. The doctor said, no, you have one. Please find it. So that you know it. If you are in a relationship, this is the week of discussion. If you are married, discuss this with your spouse. Say, I didn't know that this trouble I've been making in this house is as a result of absence of meeting my love language. I'll give you the love language again. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch. Be honest between you and God. Write it. Don't show anybody. It's none of your neighbor's business. Just write it. Write it and know it. Know it now. So that you stop punishing the brother. There are many of you that are always complaining. The guy has done everything he knows to do. You are saying he doesn't love you. He doesn't know what to do again. Please tell him what your love language is. It will help him to relate with you. Is someone learning something here? Maintaining relationships. Many homes are broken down because they do not know this. Look at me. I once counseled a, well, a young pastor, not, not really a young pastor. And of course, I'm not mentioning names of ministries and all of that, but I don't know what it was. This guy just got married and it was very funny. Because it looked like all about their lives was ministry. This guy can travel and not see the lady for months. And I knew where he learned that from. The lady was angry. Hallelujah. But she didn't know how. Some ladies will not talk. But he's eating them. Are you listening to me? And that situation, when I, the guy was troubled. And then I said, okay, let me, can I talk with the lady? I talked to her on phone. This lady started crying and said she doesn't even trust the guy again. She doesn't even know if the guy is sleeping around. I just knew that her love language is quality time. And this guy has not spent time with her. Brothers, let me shock you. If you don't spend time with a particular lady, one day you will come and find your files and everything outside and she has already married another man they've given birth to children you don't know businessmen beware bishop gave us a story of of one man somewhere this guy was a billionaire he was obsessed about making money and he will not spend time with his wife we'll talk about maintaining marriages now that's where we we'll talk of sex marriage emotion spending time god and all of this when, when, when you are not married, we don't have anything to say about sex. If you have been waiting for me to talk about sex, you are wasting your time. Till we start talking about marriage. Marriage with a ring. Marriage with a ring. Praise God. Say amen if you are getting blessed. If this thing is offending you, it's a sign that you may need to adjust some things. Don't get angry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because honestly, many of us are too loose. We have allowed a lot of things. There are many Christian relationships that they sleep with one another. They are happy. They don't think it's an issue. The brother showed the sister a nice scripture in the Bible. First Corinthians. Twisted the girl's head. I'm telling you now, get it straight. Sex is only, only, only for married people. I don't care what the Western world says. When we talk about marriage here, I'm going to tell you the spiritual implication of sex. We'll talk about it. You know us here, we don't have time for any stories to read. We don't teach, we're not teaching you biology. We're teaching you something that will help you in life. And so we'll say it as it is. Many of you think sex is just all about pleasure and emotional satisfaction. When I show you the spiritual side of sex, you will run away from any man who wants to sleep with you who is not your husband. Are you listening to me? God threatened me with that revelation. Threatened! When I had the revelation, I just said, ah, myself behave. 
Joshua Selman behave. In Jesus' name. Okay. Are you learning something right now? Could this be the reason why many of you have entered over 10 relationships and they didn't work? You are blaming any everybody. Could it be that you are the problem now? Are you now seeing? 10 people cannot be wrong. Could it be that the problem is you? Before I round up, we are going to talk about what I call the love and respect principle. Still talking about communication. The love and respect people principle. Now, Dr. Emerson, please write it and look up. We finish with Gary Chapman. Dr. Emerson wrote something about love and respect and he called it the crazy circle. Everybody say the crazy circle. Say one more time, the crazy circle. For the last time, please. Let me have two people again. At least Ella come again. And who? When Ella came out, who came out? Oh yeah, now. Oh God, you are doing as if come and stand to me. Ella and him. You are married or you are going out. Hold your hands. Praise God. What is the crazy circle? This was the example he gave. Listen. Please listen. They are celebrating their 10 years anniversary. Correct? And this guy is busy. So he looks at, you know this kind of card that you, don't, you really don't see what they just write. Maybe something sweet. And you know we men, we, are, we can, sometimes we, we are not thorough. You just see the card. Ah, I like it. So he bought the card. He has been forgetting all the wedding anniversaries. And she's hoping he will remember the tenth one. Are you getting my example? So now the guy comes and gives her a surprise. Hold it. Honey, I bought you this card. Now Ella is smiling, smiling now. Don't, don't worry. Now she's smiling. Finally. She's interpreting this care and attention as what? Love. Is that correct? Then she opens the card only to find out that the guy bought a birthday card mistakenly. Please listen to my story. What did he buy? During an anniversary. Suddenly she looks at it. Bam! She drops it down and says, it was better you didn't buy the card. What is she doing? Listen. She has been compromised. He, he has failed to interpret love. So she feels the only way to know him make it to, to make him know it is by being negative and hurting him. Are you following me now? Now the guy is angry because he interprets what she has done as disrespect. Are you following me now? And he's saying. Can you not even appreciate the fact how many men can remember to buy an anniversary card? I bought you an anniversary card. If you talk to me like this again, I will slap you. Why? Now, he too is revenging. Dr. Emerson calls it the crazy cycle. Where a woman responds negatively to communicate her heart. And the man responds negatively too. Fire for fire ends two of you in ashes. Correct? This is the crazy cycle. Do you understand? I told you that ladies desire love, care, attention. Men desire what? Respect. Everybody say respect and honor. So, what the love and respect principle is the principle of communication in relationship and marriage that teaches you how to look beyond the acts of your spouse and see their heart. Are you following me now? Then you will be able to understand the craving that led to that activity that was done. Whether it was done well or not. Are you following me now? So let's, let's do it again. Now he gives her this. And then she collects it and opens and it's a birthday gift. And she's like, wow honey, I, I want to appreciate you. And she laughs and jokingly says, Ogasa, do you know you bought me a birthday gift? Say, Tom, but at least you tried. If you remember this, this year, next year you'll be meticulous. Now what happens? She's sad. But she found out that dishonoring him will complicate the issue. Are you following me now? So in that honor, the guy now feels bad because she has honored him. And he will now say, do you know what? We're going out this night. 
even the devil will not stop us. I must make this up because she has honored him. Are you following me? We call it the love and respect principle. There are some ladies whose marriages and relationship will never work until they learn this. Look up. Ladies, look up. No matter what enters you, don't ever get so wild and angry that you start insulting a guy and washing him down and giving it to him. Ladies, call it giving it to him. You give it to him. See, I washed him from head and wash i gave it to him he knew that i've been watching him you are laughing let me tell you something no matter how beautiful you are your beauty will fade like a leaf the guy will hate you forever are you are you are you understanding what i'm saying don't try to embarrass a guy you went to swear joint or gagan boys here you are going to buy swear and of course the guy want to behave so he'll say um you know, Ella, just speak for us. A wise lady will honor him back. You don't want to disgrace him. You know, based on your relationship, you can be free to say some things. Even if he's joking, how much oil should I pick? Oh, not you just start laughing and say, hey, hey, hey. Oh, Gaga, how much? 50 naira, how much? 100 naira, how much? 200. You say, put five of this one. And all the guy has is 500. Now, this guy is sweating. He doesn't know what to do. He's looking around if you see any of his friends. He say, do you mind, mommy? I, I eat three. Three will be okay for me. How about you? He said, okay, Gamba, just put two more. <laughs> the guy is fidgeting. So his response is, he's just saying, put more. He already knows that this thing is a mess. There's no honor there. Hallelujah. And at the end, the guy suddenly looks at you and says, look, sweetheart, let me just tell you, I came with only 500 why didn't you tell me what kind of thing is this when you are not ready don't say did i ask you for it did i ask you for it please in fact i'm even going the friend will say no no come and that's how you you go to the hostel let me tell you something you broke the love and respect principle you embarrassed the guy there washed him there you were happy you entered your room boiling and your roommates had to tell you calm down can you imagine and you are saying he embarrassed you you didn't look at his sincere efforts. Are you following me now? Listen, God is speaking to some of you here. You need to change it. You have been breaking the love, respect circle. And there are some of you brothers. You must be careful. Hallelujah. I've said it here. Don't put too much culture inside your relationship. Hallelujah. The lady just comes and says, Hi, how are you, Elijah? And you're like, Ah, Ella, see, look at me. I'm from a royal family, one. Number two, I'm older than you. Something that is supposed to be obvious. Even my sisters kneel down to greet me. See, don't, don't think just because I asked you out to you within all these things. Let me tell you, I can leave this relationship and I will sleep fine. This nonsense the brother is saying now is called breaking the, the the love respect circle are you hearing me don't do that so when there is love from this side there is what the bible says proverbs 24 we're rounding up proverbs 24 verse 3 let's look at it quickly proverbs 24 verse 3 from amplified is it possible to get it amplified amplified please project it i want you to read it we are going to pray the devil is a liar in jesus name that devil that wants to destroy relationships and marriage we will cast it out this night in the name of jesus everybody say my marriage must work say it it must work in jesus name all right everybody let's read one to read through skillful and godly wisdom is a house a life a home a family built and by understanding it is established upon a sound and good foundation he said through skillful and godly wisdom is what so if you understand the principles god is speaking there are some of you that god stopped from entering relationships so that you can understand this hallelujah 
the greatest craving for a lady is the craving to be loved brothers say it after me the greatest craving for a lady is to be loved to be cared for to be protected ladies say after me the greatest desire for a man is to be respected to be honored now just stop me one minute in what way have you been dishonoring the men around you ladies this is a time for soul searching or rounding up in what way in what way I stop the keyboard playing so that you will listen carefully. There are many of us that you need to change your attitude. Are you following me now? You need to what? Change your attitude. I want all the ladies in Koinonia to treat the brothers with respect and dignity. It doesn't matter if the guy is older than you or you are older than the person. Treat them well. Are you listening to me? What did I say? Treat them well. Don't treat the blooders like rags. If you've been doing it, stop it. Because do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he will reap. One day they will treat you like rags. Treat the brothers with respect. When you see them, greet them. Be smart. Don't think it is weakness. Many of you have been taught... You think he's being cheap. You are being virtuous. Are you following me? You are not being cheap for God's sake. You are being virtuous. Brothers, let me never see you shouting, insulting, embarrassing, boiling at any lady. You are struggling for seat with her. He said, all I know is that me Except you cut these two legs. You can do all your thing. You know? I must sit out here. And the lady is looking very helpless. You are bullying her. Hallelujah. Brothers, you should protect our sisters for us. I've said it here. Brothers, behold your wives. Sisters, behold your husbands. It's not a lie. Huh? It's not a lie. It will happen. It's happening. It will keep happening. So treat them well. The person you may be treating with this day now may be your husband. True, true. Treat them well. Hallelujah. Don't gauge people and say, Kai, the way this brother is dressed himself now, wow. You don't merit my respect. When you look at the brothers, you look at them, say, mm, this guy babs well, he's nice, he's not pouring saliva at me anyhow. I will respect him. But the brother that is coming, praise and worship, you are just shouting and pouring saliva. And he say, brother, now about me, kilo shele, what is wrong? <laughs> are you the only one in Koinonia? Are you the only one who can call upon the name of the Lord? <laughs> Ladies, lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a virtuous woman. In the name of Jesus, I honor my husband. I respect my husband. In the name of Jesus. And say one more time, in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. And I respect them. Please put down your hands. God bless you. Guys, lift your hands. Lift two of your hands. Please do it. Lift two of Aside, no, if you are not my... Sir, no, ah. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah say in the name of Jesus I'm a caring brother say it I'm a caring brother I'm a loving brother what, what else I'm a what I'm a, I'm a responsible brother I'm a visionary brother say it again I care for my wife I protect her I take her seriously I pay the price to be committed. In Jesus' name, put down your hands. Yeah. That's very, very good. If you do that, you will find out that 
you can enter a relationship and i won't promise you a smooth sail but you see at every juncture things can be managed is someone learning something tonight we are going to pray we have three prayer points tonight before we stand up listen the first prayer point is you are going to pray for humility there are some of you that this teaching tonight stung you in a way that you are still angry with me now because it changed your ideologies there are ladies that believe you are too hot too attractive to respect any man let me tell you now straight to the point somebody is better than you period there are some guys that think you are too much of a celebrity you are a hot cake everybody talks about you you are the guy let me announce to you now stop dreaming stop what dreaming because there are three thousand other prophets who have not bowed to bell and god can replace any arrogant man and any arrogant lady praise the lord some of you the way you are behaving you are telling god you don't want to marry because you are not ready to listen to the rules and comply we are going to pray next week i'm going to we are going to be discussing don't miss next week meeting it's going to be a serious it's going to be war against delay and all of these satanic things i'm going to be teaching you a lot of spiritual mysteries you'll be seeing the reason behind delay and all of these things because there are some of you who are standing in for your family members and your loved ones some of you have done all these things that we are saying but things are not working we'll be examining it tomorrow are you ready to pray stand up on your feet bless you now look up how many people did i bring out here where are they four of you huh we are going to give you lunch tomorrow i didn't say you are in a relationship but it's, it's our appreciation four of you huh four of you you will go for lunch tomorrow hallelujah next time when we're giving example run and come out hallelujah prayer point number one listen you're going to pray and say lord whatever needs to be changed in me please humble yourself whether you are married whether you are single whether you're in a relationship or not humble yourself and cry to god and say lord there are some things in me there are some mindsets and ideologies that i've been having but from this night's teaching, I've seen that I need to change. Lift your voice and cry. Cry to God. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I repent from pride and arrogance. I repent from having a wrong attitude a wrong attitude about relationship a wrong attitude about marriage make sure you are praying but Lord I hear your voice tonight thank you for preparing me pray say lord change me walk on me make me a woman of virtue as i am right now i'm not yet fit to be a woman of virtue i humble myself change me don't be arrogant tonight don't be arrogant tonight humble yourself and pray say lord i've tried but you need to work on me. Hallelujah. 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 Now, please pair yourselves into two. You are going to pray for the brother or the sister you are holding. If you can, if you cannot, no problem. Hallelujah. Listen, second prayer point. You are going to pray. Hallelujah. And you're going to say every mindset 
that is in that brother or that there are some of us there are strongholds some of us are stubborn even after this teaching you will live angry and you will live offended rather than allowing the teaching to get inside you hallelujah you are going to pray for your neighbor and say lord please break this person we want excellent wives we want visionary men pray for the person lord walk on my sister walk on my brother in the name of the lord jesus break every pride break every wrong mindset let our sisters become women of virtue women of virtue women of virtue excellent women award-winning women pray for the brothers let our men become responsible men of integrity men of stature men of grace pray for her say lord let the spirit of respect let the spirit of honor come upon my sister grace to respect men grace to respect your husband grace to respect your husband hallelujah hallelujah please you can leave the person the final prayer point this night listen listen we are going to pray for purity in our relationships did you hear that if you've been involved in anything that you know you have crossed boundaries don't feel bad we don't condemn you this is a family are you hearing me this is a family there is always a new beginning are you hearing what i'm saying but you're going to make a decision make a decision with god and say i'm going to keep my relationship pure if you are married say i'm going to keep my marriage pure no unfaithfulness no infidelity lift your voice and pray grace for purity please take it serious pray you've been involved in any kind of ungodly lifestyle or practice please pray say lord i receive grace grace ladies pray and say no man who is not your husband will see your nakedness make a commitment with god make a commitment it is worth it it is worth it it may look unusual but i tell you it is worth it it will bring the anointing of god to your life it will bring the glory of god to your life it will bring the fire of god to your life purity who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place lord let us have pure relationships holy relationships pure relationships relationships that we'll be proud of hallelujah hallelujah we taught on emotional don't just let your emotions listen there are many relationships right now and many marriages and homes that are at the verge of breaking they think it's satan because that tingly thing is not there i bring you a word right now you know that every home is built by commitment are you listening to me emotions are good but it's not enough to keep and sustain a home if you commit yourself when you feel emotionally high and then retract it when it's down you are not going to have a stable marriage your spouse will annoy you there are times you will be offended but you must make up your mind that you are committed it's better to leave the relationship for marriage we don't believe in divorce we're going to talk about that next week divorce different things let me tell you something listen look at me i'm saying it honestly listen 
If you are in this place and you are in a relationship, if you know you are not going to be committed, please let the brother or let the sister go in peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did you hear what I said? Sisters, there is no putting leg, one leg here. And you are raising the brother's hopes, making him feel that he's all in all for you. Meanwhile, the real person you are looking at is in rivers. You are just saying whoever among them starts talking about marriage. This is ungodly. Let me tell you. I've said it for years. We don't believe in double dating. Double dating is not Christian. If you feel you have a problem with your relationship, there are ministers around. Hallelujah. We have elderly people around that can counsel. By the time we talk with you and we see that, oh, there is a compromise. Truly, we see that based on the compromise, this relationship may not work. Listen, as Christians, if there is need to end relationships, we end relationships, not break them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You break relationships and break people's hearts. Next week, we are going to discuss. There are people who have started relationships and eventually they saw that, okay, there is a need. This thing may not work well. We are going to talk about, there are a number of things we are going to talk about next week. Remember I said, we'll talk on health issues, family issues, you know, faith issues, and all of these family encumbrances and so on. We'll talk about them. Hallelujah. No matter what it is. Just like you enter the relationship and you came and met Bishop Stan or Pastor Jake, you say, oh, I'm in a relationship. Bless this relationship and pray. Some of you are in a relationship like secret society. Nobody knows. We don't know. No, you think, let me tell you, we are not sadists. Are you listening to me? We are not sadists, wicked people who are just waiting and say, who told you to go out with that lady? No. We rejoice when you are in a relationship. When you are involved, you are in a relationship, when the relationship starts undergoing turbulence, nobody knows. You don't involve the ministers. You don't involve people so that will link you with parents and people who can help you counsel. Now you are facing a situation, maybe a health challenge, maybe interfaith thing, you know, all these kinds of, we'll talk about them next week. Maybe there are issues that will honestly not make the relationship work. At that point, what do you do? There are ways to go about it. Are you following me now? So that it is properly managed. In, to an extent that even when both of you are not together, you can be friends. There are people who, because they did not marry one another, all of them have married for 10 years, but they cannot look eyeball to eyeball because of what happened. This is what we want to avoid. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with liking the sister. You have heads of department. There are ministers in charge. Let me tell you, we are always here to help you. I tell you sincerely. Don't just do things. It's when everything backfires. You come and say, Bishop, this koinonia sisters, I don't understand though. Everybody I'm asking is saying, no, there is a reason. They are not stupid. There is a reason why they are telling you no. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't miss next week. God will help us. You are not born again in this place. Please listen. Keep standing. You've not made up your mind to give your heart to the Lord. There is a lot that you cannot do. For instance, you cannot truly walk in purity and godliness. You will find yourself struggling with a lot of things. Hallelujah. You will find out that anything you put your hands to do may not prosper. Donia. And now I want to give you an opportunity. Blessed there are be many the name of, you. of the Lord. Hosanna to you. We thank you. You have not left us alone. You have left us with your presence. That glorious presence that brings about healings and deliverances. Restoring destinies, building men, bringing them into a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the favor. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight is going to be a very powerful meeting. So we are going to prophesy to yourself before we start hallelujah your life will never be the same your life will never be 
the same Your life will never be It's a prophecy Say my life will never be Lord, my life Hallelujah. I know that for sure. The Lord told me he will do mighty things in this place tonight. Hallelujah. And when God speaks, it's up to you to believe it. If you don't believe, he will just jump you. He doesn't have time to waste. There is always a receiver. It may not be you, but it may be somebody close to you. But there is always a receiver. Hallelujah. Wherever there is a receiver, there is a God to give abundantly I live to praise your name oh yes and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings I live to praise your name and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings Come on, shake away your fears with this song. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow is. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear. This is the part I want you to sing. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Sing it again until fear leaves you. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Doesn't matter what you saw on the board. Doesn't matter what the medical report tells you. Doesn't matter that you are advancing in age. Two more times. For the last time now. Lord, we have no fear. We are absolutely certain. Absolutely. Based on the truth of your word. Lord, we thank you. Because you are faithful. Bless us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be honored. Hallelujah. How many of you know this song? I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved. Come on, sing the Lord reign it. The Lord reign Blessed be the Lord. The Lord reign at one more time with faith in your heart. The Lord Blessed be the rock. Be the rock. Let, the rock Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. You're not just singing a chorus. The Lord reigneth. 
Blessed be the rock. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted in my life. you are the rock of our salvation the Bible says call unto me Jeremiah 33 verse 3 said and I will answer I will show you great and mighty things that you know not and so Lord we thank you honestly we thank you and tonight you will exalt yourself in the lives of many people in this place you will be exalted you will be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's good to visit these very deep, powerful hymns. They were not written by hungry people. They were not producing albums. Hallelujah. Some of these hymns were written by people who were very, very powerful people they knew god personally they were not just trying to do the kind of jamboree that we do in church today hallelujah and it was from the depth of their experiences that they wrote certain songs be exalted in the name of jesus hallelujah can we sing one more song be lifted high. can you lift your hands as you sing this song Lord, we exalt you. We're singing songs that lift him high. Listen to what you are singing. You're righteous. There is no deceit in you. Now sing it with faith in your heart. Believe that I. Oh Lord, oh Lord be lifted high for you are holy. Righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hope ten people tell them you're welcome. It's good to see you. And be gloriously seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. We have a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. A lot to do tonight. God is desperate to make sure somebody has a testimony in this place. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up our family life series today. It's going to be powerful. Psalms 128. Tonight, we're going to cause the yoke of delay in marriage once and for all. I'm serious. Don't think we're playing. We don't just talk stories in this place. We're going to confront, we're confronting the gates of hell in a way that will shock you tonight. This is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to destroy a lot of things that have tied people's marital destinies let me tell you something if you came here just drowsy and sleepy wake up today's service is not the type you sleep in because whatever has refused to respond to your life 
and to your marital destiny will change tonight. Some of you will be standing for your loved ones. Could this be the answer to your prayer and fasting? So make sure that you are wide awake. If your neighbor is disturbing him, say, neighbor, we didn't pay money for this place. So behave yourself. Hallelujah. Psalms 128. Psalms 128 verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Because I fear the Lord. Say one more time. I am blessed because I fear the Lord. He says that walketh in his ways. Verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Who is God speaking to tonight? He said for thou shalt eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall thou be and it shall be well with you. Are you ready now? Verse 3. Brothers, can you say amen? Thy wife, that means you will be married. I curse. Listen, listen. It says thy wife. It didn't say a stranger that is roaming around your house without identity. It said thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. Hold on. It didn't say your wife shall be as a vine because Jesus saw a fig tree that didn't bear fruit. He said thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. By thy side, no divorce. This is not the issue of fighting. He said, by thy side. And the last time I read my Bible, my Bible says Jesus was standing at the right side of the Father. They've not had any issue. There, there has not been need to separate themselves. Hallelujah. Everybody say, thy children. I tell you the truth. The devil that is, a, is, is responsible for the barrenness of people and families. I'm going to be teaching shortly and we'll be praying. This night, light and darkness will clash. One must bow this night. I told you this is, this is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. It says, thy children like olive plants round about your table. Organize, discipline, visionary children, not touts not thieves not troublemakers not terrorists he said they'll be round about your table not in prison cells they will be round about your table verse 4 behold that thus shall be blessed that means this is a portrait this is how you will know that a man is blessed of the lord he said whenever you see a man organized married with his wife by his side well-behaved children Sitting around a table, that means there is prosperity there. He said, when you see that, this is a portrait of God's idea of a blessed family. Say amen. amen. Father, we ask you tonight, in the name of Jesus, do something in this place. You told me you will shake, tear down altars. Lord, it's time to let your people go maritally. We are, we are here tonight to confront the gates of hell. And release your people. Enough is enough. It's good to have testimonies of cars, healings, miracles. But God wants you to be blessed maritally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Genesis 1.28 I'll be talking about three things. And then we'll pray straight away. Hallelujah. And God blessed them. Say, and God blessed them. And said unto them, number one, number two, be fruitful, multiply. It says, replenish the earth, subdue it. Why will he say subdue it? Because there is an adversary roaming around. He says subdue, in other words, exact authority over him. And have dominion over the fish and all of that and all of that. Hallelujah. Now very quickly, how many of you have been blessed by the Family Life series? We started talking about a lot of things. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we have been able to cover some grounds. Remember our five love languages, the love and respect principle. For many of you who have not been around, please get it. It's very serious, very comprehensive. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk briefly. I'll talk on three subtopics. Number one, the reason why people experience late or no marriage. 
the reason why people experience late or no marriage. Hallelujah. This is not so much of a teaching because I'm, I'm in a hurry to finish. I want to pray. Hallelujah. Honestly, I want to pray. We need to tear down walls because some of you have suffered things that the devil must repay back. A hundredfold, pressed down, shaken together. See, the Bible says if you catch a thief, he won't just say, sorry, I, I won't do it again. No, no. The Bible doesn't deal with thieves like that. It says if you catch a thief, who is a thief? Who is a thief? No, no, no. I didn't say who is the thief. Who is a thief generally? One who lays claim and steals what is not his own. There are many people that would have been enjoying the bliss of joy in their marriage and their family and the devil has taken a lot of things many of you have been helpless people think you are careless but tonight i tell you we will expose that devil god showed me this thing by now you should know when you hear me talking like this i've seen something hallelujah the reason why people experience late or no marriage before we talk about satan we want to address a few things the number one reason is unreasonable expectations. Everybody write. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations. Hallelujah. Please look up. I found out that one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot get married is that their expectations are unrealistic. Hallelujah. Especially for ladies. When you ask certain ladies, ah, what kind of guy do you want to marry? They say, Mio. The way I am like this. Even if that guy, he must be six feet three. Six feet 2.9 is not for me. He should be able to smile and be very nice. He should be able to speak Queen's English, not, not L-E-A. English that is just basic enough to pass to get um, what the, what's that <laughs> school living certificate the guy must be able to have a good sense of color combination he must be able to have this There's, I have no problem against your list the only question I have is when will he have these things before or during or if you wish after the marriage there's nothing wrong with having these wonderful expectations. My only question is when. Hallelujah. So all the brothers that have come, 58 over 60, F9. 59 over 60, F9. 40 over 60, F9. Hallelujah. Unreasonable expectations. There are many people, especially ladies, the, the way... The expectations you have carved out for yourself, the only person that fits that expectation is Jesus Christ. No mortal man can fit that expectation. Today you see somebody that looks nice, tomorrow you say, mm -mm, I don't like the way the guy smiles. Why is he too loud? And I want somebody that is... Ah. One man said the best way to predict your future is to create it so that you don't disturb anybody. Create it by yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. Me, I've suffered in my life where I must marry a millionaire. I must marry a millionaire. There's no, you know when they are taking people for a job, they say you are a driver, you must have five years experience. Some of you, you must have five years experience with prosperity. You must know how to do this and that. He must have his duplex, so I'm not ready to manage inside one room that will be squeezing me. As you're laughing tonight, take it seriously because we have to solve. Some of us are the ones who open doors for delay in marriage. Financial status. Oh, he must be. No, no, no. I'm, he's still under unreasonable expectations. Financial status. Brother, where are you working? There's one primary school here. The primary school, me. I, I'm, I, your father has warned you. Your mother has warned you. They say, don't bring any teacher for us here. I was a teacher. Your mother was a teacher. Change. And now you are waiting. You are hoping. Oh, Shell. NMPC. 
Where again? Say it. Chevron. Uh huh. Sir? Mobile. Look at the lady smiling. CBN. Nigerian Printing and Minting Company. Dangote Group. And some of you are happy. Oh, this is the kind. I want somebody that when I stand by him, people will say, Kai, how did God locate you like this? Remember our song? I didn't know you will answer me this way. Listen, while that vision is good, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that with this kind of mindset, you will never be able to get married to the right person. You know why? Because oftentimes, God will tell you, go to your farm and harvest your crop. You will get to the farm and see a bag of seeds. Are you listening to me? With hoe on it and grace. These are the three things you will find there. But God told you, go and get a harvest. It is in God's nature to speak and call things as though they have already happened. So God will tell you a millionaire is coming to your life. And you just see a brother come and say, brother, where are you going as a shoemaker? You say, ah, God, this does not look like the prophecy. Unreasonable expectation. Physical appearance. I want somebody who is this and that. I want somebody, guys, I want a lady with this and that. I want a lady with dimples. I want a lady with another dimple here. I want a lady with dimple here. I don't want a lady that opens her mouth too wide. What are you looking for? Hallelujah. I want a lady whose hair, you know this Indian film they used to act. I want a lady whose hair is here. Hallelujah. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. I want a lady who is a top chef who has been validated by everybody to be able to eat. I want a lady who can drive. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. Unreasonable expectation. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, there was one funny film they used to show. Very nice and pretty. What's the name? Another Life. Man, some of you don't know it. Don't claim you know it. Some of you, where were you then? <laughs> another Life. Hear the name, Self. Who use that kind of name now? Media, the Another Life. They're using Second Chance and the rest. And I remember every time I saw some of the people, the, the actors and all of that, I used to look at them and say, ah, especially those who were wicked, they were not very good looking and it used to pain me in the soap opera. And then one poor village pretty lady is the one that will keep telling lies, oppressing and doing all of that. I hated soap opera because I said, ah, why is it that they find very nice ladies and all of that and as small as I had a dream and my dream was that one day, one of the person who was acting, that by God's grace, if I may, oh... <laughs> Bible says when I was a child. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. My simple message for you tonight is that it does not happen before relationship. You say, ah, but does that is what let me tell you something. Any success you did not invest in it, you are not qualified to partake. That's why there are some men that only married. There are some, come now, sweetheart, drop your Bible. There are some, there are some men who get married to a lady. They are married though. But this lady is like a stranger. You know why? The guy was already a multi-millionaire. And she's just one of the many things that happened to enter his life. Are you following me now? She has her room. The only thing he does is to sleep with her. That's all. And that's even when he wants. It's like the kings of old. So she's just roaming around like a nanny and a house girl. In that's, not, that's not a good home. Are you hearing me? 
The children say, Mommy, one banana. I say, mm, Go and ask your father. Me, ma, they brought me inside this house. Me, ma, I'm inside this house. No confidence. You know why? You were looking for something that could not be found. And since you found what looked like it, you have to pay the price there. But a brother that you were there with them, you so Gary together. You say, how much do you have now? Don't worry. See, I don't have anything, but I'm speaking God's word. And you can see me. I'm showing you the blueprint of what I'm doing. Now you brought the Gary we drank together. Do you think if we enter the what car now? Say something realistic. Don't tell me limousine. Say something realistic, please. A good car. When we enter a good car, listen. Do you think, listen, do you think this lady will be carried away by my prosperity? Because we have been there. Are you listening? You grew into this thing together. Many of you don't want to grow into the blessings of marriage. Some of the wealthy people we know today, ask them. When they got married, the man didn't even have a bicycle. He didn't even have vision for some of them. Just one fellowship, they were strolling one day and God caught him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. God started walking. But now, the woman is partaking of the blessings. Whether you like the madam or not, she owns the company with her husband. Because they suffered. And she can look at you and tell you, I remember those days. Don't celebrate success that does not have history. It's fake. Any success that does not have history is fake. I assure you, if you are laughing, hold on, stop laughing. Any true success must have history. It is the history that will preserve you in that realm of success. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Unreasonable expectations. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I set realistic standards. Refer to our message. Um, I think that's um, Family Life 2. We, we stated some very clear and reasonable standards. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Hallelujah. What you want does not exist for many of you. So you must come down and believe. It's still part of this running away from responsibility. Many people don't want to build. Many ladies don't want to build. What if I build this thing and later he says I'm not the one? The Bible didn't say you will reap where you sowed. It said you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Number two. Now, this is important. Please, everybody listen. Health factors. One of the reasons why people do not get married or they marry late. Of recent, this has become a very, if you are involved in any kind of marriage counseling or maybe in your church and all of that, you know that this is a very big issue. Is that true? Health factors. The issue of genotypes, blood groups. I want you to listen very well. Because for you, what brought you to the sister is beauty. And the vision you saw for your mother or for your father they know the things that they've had to endure or somebody they know are you listening to me so they have parameters that may not appeal to you are you listening to me is someone following genotype what do you do listen what do you do when someone who is of a genotype ss all right now you meet this sister, you love her, two of you are getting together and then you find out that she's also SS. What do you do? And the thing has entered two of you. You have told yourself, do or die. Hallelujah. Now you've gone to meet the marriage council on your church and they say, Tor, listen, no. we had the story of so-so-so person like this and they didn't listen to us. They gave birth to five children the five children all died. Are you ready for all of these things? You know, is someone getting blessed tonight? These are not issues we young people consider. Ah, Ibuku, Jesus Christ, let Ibuku answer me. Oh. Hallelujah. Many of us are too afraid to even consider these things. Say, look, let's just move. Let's not spoil what God is trying to arrange here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Health factors, blood groups, genotypes, these have become very serious issues. In many churches, I know that this, this thing varies from church to church. Is that true? And I know that there are rules already in some churches. They don't take it. They don't care what you saw or what you had 
or how long you have been together. Once they find out that your genotypes are not compatible, they advise you strongly and guide you towards leaving one another. They say, no, please, we can't take it. We are not ready. And from the human perspective, please listen, because some of you have insulted all these people. Let me tell you something. From the human perspective, history has shown us that these kinds of things have brought a lot of problems for families. SS marries SS or AS marries this, and then they have children who keep dying or children who are having, you know, a lot of problems. The father has problems, the mother has problems, and, you know, in quotes, they become like a liability to a lot of people family members, loved ones, they now kick the man out of his job. Now, what do you do? Look up. Because some of you probably are in that situation right now as I'm speaking. And you're trusting God for guidance. So, your father or mother said, see you, this guy, you won't marry the person. For 10 years, you poor together. They say, ah, won't you marry? They say, don't worry, we're organizing things. I say, this is what is happening. Late marriage or no marriage. This is one very serious reason. Now, if you don't believe in the supernatural, here's my kind advice. Quietly live. Did you hear what I said? I'm giving you an advice that may not make sense now. But I'm a, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what did I advise? It is my advice. I didn't say God told me. Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. You may have your relationship programs and somebody may have another opinion. The reason is because, listen, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what the medical science said will happen, will happen. Are you listening to me? And you will live your remaining 30, 40, or 50, life, uh, or 50 years in misery and pain. Let me tell you the truth. I've had the opportunity to pray for people and families with these kinds of things and I know that this is not nice. There are situations where the whole family, father, mother, and the one or two sons, they are all down. What do you do? And for the rest of your life, there is torture from your family members. We told you. How many of you know that kind of thing? Well, thank God we have married people. We told you. Aaron, we warned you. Benga, you didn't hear. You were in love. Now, see, see what has happened. If you believe in the supernatural you will get up and do something about it. Hello? That kind of supernatural that God will change it when he wants to change it. Uh-uh. That's not a valid supernatural. Alright? So, come sweetheart again. Now, I'm SS, she's SS. Both of you have come and you have, you have found out that this is a serious constraint. But both of you are convinced. Listen, let me tell you. I hope you know God is not an author of confusion. And I hope you know miracles still work. We have seen genotypes, blood groups, whatever change here. So many of them. Now, what, what you would do, listen, I'm telling you what to do straight to the point. You agree and say, look, do you believe this can work? Because if you are the only one who believes it, the lady already in her mind, she has left you. She doesn't just want to embarrass you. Are you following me now? You say, let's pray. The lady goes back and says, Brother John, I've not really left you. It's just that let's be patching it. Things are getting messy here now. You know, ladies have a very funny way of putting one leg here. They can detect when the bridge starts breaking. They won't tell you. They will just stretch their leg. London Bridge is falling down. So they'll, they'll just be patched. So that whatever happens, they can wage themselves quickly. If you are involved in that, repent tonight in Jesus' name. Double dating is wrong, period. I don't care what you have, what you, you watched in your Nigerian film and soup opera. What Oprah Winfrey told you, Niger uh, what, I want to say Nigerian film is wrong. I like Nigerian films. Don't... Double dating is period. Hallelujah. Do you, the Bible says, can two walk together except the Amos 3.3. So you must agree, sweetheart, do you believe that God, are you convinced about this thing? Think about it again. If she needs time, don't be angry. She said, honestly, see, let me tell you something. Um, can you give me three days? Yeah, yeah, I've known three days. You don't, uh -uh. 
you, this, is, this is a very, very serious issue. Don't just get emotional and start shouting at the lady. Say, now I'm agreeing. You are refusing. We have not even married. We are already quarreling. No, no. But if, listen, if you think both of you can work this out, can I tell you something? Seek advice and start working it early. Is that true? Because there are some of us that are very stubborn and have gotten ourselves in trouble. No! This is the guy, your parents say, why don't, see, let me tell you, I believe in the words of elder, so I hope you're hearing me. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes parents may not know why they are saying what they are saying. But I tell you, there is a depth of wisdom. You are, you are, remember our emotional obsession teaching. Ah! This thing is burning you. As your father or your mother is talking, it's entering here, flying out there. You are not hearing, you no. Know? Fix this wedding date. Let's do this thing and let the devil be put to shame. But they are telling you, listen, listen. You will get married, you will dance that day, cut cake, and everybody will go. The people who come for your wedding, see, there is a difference between wedding and marriage. Correct? Wedding is valid for 24 hours. Your marriage begins. Fry plantain for me, honey, I'm down. No, no, please. I'm working in this house to bring money. Me too, am I not suffering what you are suffering? This is how the trouble starts. So if you know, if you think you can believe God for it, honestly, I'm giving you a very honest and fair advice. Many men of God will spiritualize this thing I'm saying and just tell you, don't worry, things, just believe, claim it, take it. Mm -mm. It has led to a lot of casualties. If both of you cannot believe God for it, cry, fast, have your last supper <laughs> and end the relationship. Don't break it. Believers don't break relationships. They end it with wisdom and grace and bless one another. But if you can believe God for it, then start making efforts. When it's time for miracle service, you say, ah, where are you? you? Say, I'm in the market. Say, leave that market. Oh, leave that market. We have something both of us have agreed upon. God will give you the miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you. Right? Let's hurry up. Number three, geographic, cultural, and family factors. Right? Why do people experience late marriages? Or why don't people... There are some families your parents have already given you warning right from when you were in primary school. You didn't even understand what they were saying. They said, see, bring, you know this globe that is in our house, map of the world. They zoomed it to Nigeria. They said, any state I draw a pen, let me not see you there. Are you ready? Yes. Number one. Number two. There are parents of, there are geographic factors that even in the same state, they tell you it's not enough. Is that correct? In fact, some, even in the same village, they say, uh-uh. This clan had this, this in 1921. They had a problem. Now, let me explain something you, that many people may not understand. You see, during the time of our parents, the world was not as heterogeneous as it is right now. Is that correct? Many people live in yards and compounds. All the ladies used to go to the stream together. So the guys could time. Natina. They could just see and know that, okay, in the next 10 years, let me just allow this investment to grow. In the next 10 years, I can be able to come and... So, they knew themselves. The parents knew the parents of the other person. Is that correct? They fought together. They celebrated festivals together. They did a lot of things together. So when you came and told your father that, ah, it's Grace now, Mario. Where is Grace from? Sokoto, they say, ah, where exactly? Say, ah, I know the father now. Give me five. You're a very nice guy. This is the kind of thing we want. Geographic factors. What is the probability of finding somebody from your village who is born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, blessed, visionary what is the probability I, I, no I want you to be very honest and realistic what is the probability
So in our generation, there will be a lot of crossing of boundaries. Some of you, they wiped your whole village in war. You don't even, you practically don't have a village again. You put migrated somewhere. So when your father or your mother is saying they should get somebody from where? The old repub, your old place or the new one? Some migrated to Cameroon. Some ran, you know, all of these things. Full of, there are full of new people that ran to Sokoto, some to Maiduguri, some to Gombe. So when you are saying a full of, from where? You must marry a full of, Benga, a full of, or nothing else. Which one? Because they've scattered to different places. Hallelujah. It's my personal opinion that that should not be a factor. However, listen, you, you know that I will always balance things. Are you ready now? Some of you are already sad looking at me. This is the reason why some people have not married. Sister Mary, till now, see my third child, see I must wait until my change comes. Since you were in the university, now both of you are doctors. Nothing. See, I'll wait. Oh, I'll wait. Cultural factors. Geographic factors. And for many of the things that our parents do, what is their... I hope you know their, their excuses are legitimate. But we know more now. Are you following me? What's their excuse? When there is trouble, when there is fight... When you tear yourselves into pieces, they know your father, they know your mother, they can come and sit down. But where you cross boundary, Lagos and Maiduguri, who knows who there? They fought during the traditional wedding and promised themselves they will never look at themselves again. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm saying? Some of you don't believe. I'm advising you, you better free your spirit now. I'm giving you the reason. Before we pray, open your mind and say, Lord, you will not destroy me. For the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. For other, other places, the parents say, ah, the people in this place, they are witches and wizards. Let me tell you something straight to the point the official religion of africa was witchcraft every tribe every state everywhere is that clear so don't start saying this state they are every who doesn't know them eh? now you want to bring trouble for us as if it was missionaries that started your own state. Now, look, let me tell you something. Witchcraft, idolatry was the bane of the day in Nigeria, everywhere. Every strait has traditionalists, herbalists, has people who are practicing witchcraft, killing people, eating, whatever it is. It's just that some have more than some. But everybody has it. Are, are you listening to me? I'm very serious, please. As you're laughing, I hope you're getting me. So, don't ever use that as an excuse. Say, these people, everybody from their village, they, no. And now, listen, our parents, listen, our parents have had so many experiences that validate their claims. So, while you are trying to defend yourself, don't just look at them and say, old generation, because I tell you something, they have testimonies of people who did not listen. Are you following me now? And they got married running down the line 10, 20, 30 years. Some of them are still suffering today. So don't just kick what the parents are saying. Can I give you an advice? If you are crossing boundaries, no three things. Number one. Number one. Wickedness Territorial wickedness is real. Write it and never forget it. If you are crossing boundary to any state or any local government, be aware of the demonic predicaments around that place. And be sure that you are ready to take the burden. Please look up. I want to be very, very, I want to speak to you tonight. Look up, please. A lady, for instance, whose whole family, she has an extended family, all right? 
and say they are all Muslims. Are you following me now? And only the lady got born again. Are you listening to me? Maybe her father is this and that, her mother. There are a lot in their families. Now you are coming as a brother. You say, this is the lady I'm going to marry. I hope you know that there is a battle to fight there. Everybody answer me. If you pretend and spiritualize it and trivialize it, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. Is the battle because the lady is bad? No. But you see, when you are married, you are not just married to the lady. You are married to the lady and everything associated to her. Are you listening to me? To her troublesome auntie, her diabolic uncle, they are all your relatives now. Her money-mongering cousins, her materialistic nephews, all together. That's why they sold the Ashoke for you to see them on the wedding day. We are now one. Hallelujah. So when you are crossing boundaries, be very realistic. I'm telling you, be very what? One lady called me one time and I won't mention names, but her father is a bishop. You know, somewhere, I think somewhere around the maybe southern eastern side. And she told me that the guy baths all his daughters with chicken before giving them out for marriage. The lady now, sorry. Are you listening to me? The elder sister, the father at her age, oh, whether whatever you he said, daddy, he said, look, you don't know what you grew up with. You are, we are the ones that have suffered this thing. Just keep quiet and let me bath you and you will go. So when it was the lady's turn now, she ran out of the house. So it was during her exodus that she called me. And she said, this is what they want to do to me. I said, you mean it? They said, they must do it. There is a covenant that had been running around their family that that's what they must do. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight. Hallelujah. So the man must bath them with chicken. As they are, bath, they are making incantations. So they bath the lady. Her elder sister told her, I said, this is what I did though. That what they planned with the fiance is that immediately they finish. They just run mountain of fire straight. Lagos, about that express with straight. They went there for deliverance. So they said, if you can do it. But the lady said, but I see, it's not like I'm in ignorance. This is taking myself to go and give the devil. Are you following me now? This is the reason why certain parents may not want people from certain places. That leads me to the fourth point, demonic oppression. The reason why people do not get married, demonic oppression. Demonic oppression. We live in a church that is so unaware of the activities of Satan. We are all new creation in Christ. The Bible says do not be unaware I know people have exaggerated things when it comes to Satan and the things of deliverance. But let me tell you something. Demonic oppression is real. Especially in marriage. Are you hearing me? I'm giving you a frank and candid advice. When you see us say, go out with somebody who is born again and serious with God. Some of you think, okay, you know, these guys have been... Demonic oppression is real. The euphoria of your emotional attachment will fade when those demons begin to deal with you. Hallelujah. Let me stop there. Second subtopic. So this is why people experience late marriage. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations, health factors, geographical factors, demonic oppression. If you don't believe in marrying people from other places, pray. You can negotiate with God. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. If the trouble is too much, you can say, God, can you give me a brother from Kano that loves God? I'm from there, for God's sake. Save me this headache. God will bring a brother. He will come for koinonia. You won't know what is bringing him. The answer to so God, No, God is faithful. Let me tell you, our relationship with God is on a personal basis. There is a way you can agree with God on some things and he will do it for you. I assure you. Hallelujah. Have I helped you? Because some of you are saying, can't we bend? You mean there's no way out? There is a way. 
there is a way is between you and God. Number two, the reasons for fight in homes and unfaithfulness. Marital fights and unfaithfulness. It's one thing to get married. It's another thing to live in that home. Is that true? Many of our homes and our marriages are shattered in pieces. And we need to find out what is wrong. Why do we have fights? Two people. Sorry. Do you accept this? What You didn't wait for them to finish talking. Do you take this lady as your wedding? Yes. Yes. You for by the grace of God, yes. Two of you said you would you are you doing yes. Think about it. Oh, yes. Does anybody have anything against this marriage? Nobody's now. We declare you husband and wife. You who are hugging and kissing, and you are happy. Two years later, the man looks at you. Who did I marry? He wrote songs, called you the lily of the valley, called you all kinds of things. Sugar in his tea. Mosquito in his net. After two years, three years, there is fight. Can I tell you something? Let me run faster than myself and tell you, sex is not enough to preserve the strength of marriage. Because I have seen people with eight children. How did they get the eight children? I will kill you. This is a man that slept with his wife to have eight children. Now he will kill her. Hallelujah. So what are the reasons? Do you know, listen, statistic tells us that one out of every two marriages in America ends up in a divorce within the first five years. Right now, this thing has gotten so bad that in many churches now, you go to church and go to court too. It wasn't really like that, but what is happening in this society now? A man can be married and leave his state and come somewhere and just be strolling, come for koinonia, see a very nice lady like this, turn her mind like a pendulum, and then get married to her, go and buy small golf and give the parents. The father will say, you must marry this guy. You must marry him. We have suffered. It's enough. Now you get married only to find out that you are the wife of somebody else's. You are a concubine. Why do we have fights? And then I want to tell you something. The rate of unfaithfulness. Listen, this is a study I made by myself. The rate of unfaithfulness in Christian marriages. I was talking with my sister yesterday and she was telling me of a survey that they did in our local church not somewhere else our local church married women that are not submissive and ladies that are promiscuous that have really spoiled i don't mean eh, okay you went and slept with somebody by mistake willful willing conscious derailing from the things of god when they announced the statistics to the church parents were afraid Parents were afraid. Fathers were afraid. Mothers. Nobody trusted themselves again. Which one are you in these statistics now? Because they didn't announce anybody's name. When my sister told me, he touched me. Hallelujah. Do you know right now, there is almost no trust in our homes. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are even in a relationship because of how the guy is behaving like an arm robber. Once he goes to his himself, you quickly carry the phone. Let me check. Who called? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then the guy will save the lady's name as Joseph. Oh, come on. We know these things. Say, ah, Joe. Yeah. When you have moved, you say, ah, why are you calling me by this time now? You don't know my wife is at home. Immediately I come. Have you delivered it? Okay, I'm coming to Lagos first thing in the morning. Please don't waste my time. I, I need to spend time with my wife. I found out that I've not been spending time with her. And she's laughing. Not knowing that the man is unfaithful. So why is this happening? I can act. If ministry didn't work, I would have done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. The reasons why we have fights. Violating the love-respect principle. How many of you remember our love-respect principle? 
What's the principle? That husbands should do what? Love their wives. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 25. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit. You honor. I told you that love for a man means respect and honor. Nothing more, nothing less. To the degree to which you respect and honor your husband, that's the degree to which you love him. Hallelujah. And for the ladies, the degree to which you love her, you care for her, you give her time. Remember our five love languages. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, eh? acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Only ladies are talking. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch. No, it's not. We're talking marriage now, so you don't need to star it. The star was before you get married. Once the pastor says husband and wife, God himself takes his star away. Until then, God himself stamps it there. If you force the door to open, it will open. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one, violating the love respect principle. How many men don't respect their wives? Two of them go for a program. You see the man disgracing the wife. How, have you seen some of our parents do that? Don't pretend as if, and, you, and it will be paining you. You see the woman will just keep quiet. Or the woman disgracing her husband. You go, there's small popcorn. You are about living. Uh, Madam, can I fetch for this? You are fetching. People are saying, what kind of woman is this? The husband is just standing. You don't know that you are bearing his image. The man is saying, honey, let's go. Say, I won't go. Let me do this. Do we have this in our house? And you are just fetching. The love respect principle. The love respect principle. All the guys say, I will love my wife. Say it, I will love my wife. And the lady said, I will honor my husband. So that's the number one reason. Number two, I won't talk much about that. We are not in a strict, only few people are married here, so I won't talk. Emotional dissatisfaction. Not satisfying themselves sexually and all of that. Leave it there. I'm not saying more. Hallelujah. Thank God there's marriage counseling. Go to your marriage counselor. Hallelujah. But emotional dissatisfaction. And this is not just sex. Spending time together, there is an emotional dimension. It's limited before you get married. But when you get married, come on, it's part of what keeps the bond. It is a very serious reason why men, listen please. A woman who is busy, you are a tailor, you are a contractor, you have a restaurant. You are, you are in French school. You are learning another language. Every time, you are, your husband will say, oh, he will, you are embarrassing him. You are making him beg you to sleep with you. He will keep quiet. One day, he will stop talking to you. Ah! You find out that your house help is happy, walking in the house, very excited. Madam, how are you? Fine. How is everything? God has been faithful. That's a sign that there's fire on the mountain. I'm giving you an honest and a very candid advice. Listen, let me tell you something. God who designed intimacy is not foolish. Are you listening to me? Violating any of God's principle, tithing, lack of intimacy, whatever it is, will cost you a lot. Sisters, let me advise you. You are not in your house. You are supposed to preserve and help the man. Do you know the wife is supposed to cover for the man? Your husband is a nice, handsome man of God. He goes to minister in a convention. God moves and honors you. You are there snapping. And they are saying, how does it feel to be, you know, this bishop's wife? You are talking. One other lady is giving him compliments. Say, sir, uh, please, God gave me this prophetic instruction. I, I need to come and clean your shoes, clean your trousers. The man says, sir, I insist. Will you, will you hinder an innocent lady like the man? Says, All right, if you insist. Aha. Uh -huh. You were not there. The media is carrying your face. You are happy. You never had it that good. Now you are enjoying it. Many women are careless about their men. I'm not saying just be irresponsible and you can't allow the man rest. He's having a meeting. You are in front of the, the meeting door. 
you are saying whatever this meeting is it will finish in my presence here there are women like that this is insecurity your husband wants to book ticket you are there how many people no no trust there must be trust but in the midst of it there are efforts that you must make are you listening to me don't allow any you know christian homes you can see a woman just come at an odd time and say i want to come and visit your husband she's calling him all kinds of names an unbeliever will tell you straight there i hope you know unbeliever women they won't talk they will say please call it jealousy call it whatever let me tell you let it not happen again church people say if i talk like that what of in the fellowship Uh uh-huh it's until the man travels for a business trip four months you are not there. later on one of his friends that cannot keep his mouth shut to say madam i need to talk to you this thing is paining me and the way i trust you i must tell you you see that hotel there your husband is there go and meet him there for four months he has been there abroad <laughs> emotional dissatisfaction is a very serious issue are you listening to me I didn't want to touch the issue, but it's becoming necessary. Hallelujah. Brother, you are fasting. One week, two weeks, immediately you finish. You started Maranatha fast. You finish Armageddon fast. Now, wow. Why did you marry? Why did you marry? You would have stayed alone. There must be a place when you get married define your lives are you listening to me it's very important there's a book or a robots wrote one of the reasons why he said he was successful in ministry was he had very close sexual intimacy with his wife i don't mean i hope you know what i'm talking about some of you your mind is already uh -uh. to the pure all things are pure hallelujah number three financial issues sorry my dear are you tired financial issues very important why there are fights on faithfulness marriage financial issues poverty is a very bad thing i hope you know lack is a very bad thing finance lack of finance has led to the breaking of many good homes Hallelujah. Let me rush. Number four, spiritual factors. Spiritual factors. We are going to be dealing with this very extensively tonight. Spiritual factors. You married a very nice, loving, virtuous, wonderful lady. Now the lady has changed. You don't even know who you married again. Or the man has changed. The man didn't used to drink. He didn't used to smoke. He was a brother. He was even an esco in your fellowship. That's what made you like him. Now he has changed. He has a special pr- fridge. Cronenberg. Star. Name them. They pay him salary. He comes up. 300,000 or 200,000. He comes back with 5,000. His friends have helped him finish it. Comes to vomit around. And you are saying, it wasn't like this. There are many families that have these unanswered questions. And the recommendation they gave them is go for counseling. Let me tell you something. This is not an issue of counseling. Are you hearing me? There are forces of darkness militating against families. And if you do not stand to take your position in Christ and conquer these things, you will be surprised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual factors. You just got married and you found out that this man suddenly developed epilepsy. He wasn't epileptic. There was no problem. Stress that you cannot, you cannot imagine. You give birth to children. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. It's not normal. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The third area I want to talk about very quickly is the issue of barrenness. The reason for barrenness and unfruitfulness in marriage. In Mark 11 verse 12 to 14. When Jesus saw a barren tree, he cursed it. 
That means God cannot be the author of barrenness. Say amen. Are you listening to me? The command he gave man, Genesis 1 28, he said, Be fruitful, multiply. For a long time, the issue of barrenness disturbed me because I've had the opportunity to pray for many people that have suffered from barrenness. And so it was a personal, it was a personal pain in my heart. And I wanted to find out why. Hallelujah. Now, the general reason for barrenness is health challenges, you know, all kind, all the whole medical things, fibroids, no womb, stories, stories, and all of that. I won't go into that. But I want to give you something very shocking. Hmm. I'm already sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 98%, listen, 98% of barrenness issues in marriage is a resultant effect of satanic activities, either in the life of the individuals or tied to their family. Please listen to me carefully. Please, can you hear me? This is very serious. I want to have your attention now. 98%. Sometimes people see ladies or people that are barren and just say, ah, maybe this lady was promiscuous. No, stop judging people. I know healthy people, brothers, sisters, people who loved God, kept themselves. Now the man gets married and they start telling him all kinds of reports from the hospital. Oh, you cannot give birth. Now the lady gets married. Suddenly they tell her, there is a growth in your stomach. Where did it come from? What did I do? Listen, please. Please give me strings. Hallelujah. Strings. 98% of barrenness in marriage. Please listen. Because someone may be a savior. Some of you, it's time for you to set your loved ones free. This is why God is bringing this word. People have been asking questions. Why do we have this sister barren? Ah, ah, we knew this sister, this brother barren. Can I tell you something? It is purely demonic. Purely demonic. I once spoke to a lady years ago. I wish there's a way I can see that lady again. Ah, knowledge. Years ago, this lady came to me and she told me she was crying. And she said, Sir, if I tell you what is wrong with me, you will not believe it. She so talked to me. She said, I don't have a womb. It's not like I lost it. No fallopian tube, no nothing. I'm as empty as a man. Nobody knows it. She's not told anybody because some of you won't keep quiet. Hallelujah. And this lady was talking to me. Listen, you know, and then those times I was saying, Abba, don't worry. Um, you know, God will do something. God will do all of that. And the lady looked at me and she said, will I marry? I said, Abba, you marry. Do you know the question the lady asked me? She said, can you marry somebody like me? Aha. That was when the thing dawned on me that this lady was not playing games with me here. You know, sometimes you see people come for counseling. You don't know what is eating them up. I looked at this lady. I said, Lord, do you know after I left this lady, I had to go and cry to God. I said, Lord, give me the power for creative miracles or let this kind of people never come to me again. They should rather go to a man of God who can solve their problem. This is too bad. This lady left my place crying. Now you will see this lady and think she was promiscuous, isn't it? Because we are very judgmental in the body of Christ. Once you see anything, you just carry your mouth and start saying things. Uh-uh. The Bible says judge not. There's nothing. They, they said she was supposed to be a man or something, something, blah, blah, blah. And then you know all those doctors, medical, we have a doctor here. He gave a testimony. You know all those things they taught you people. Hallelujah. There are issues like that. A man gets married to his wife. One year, no child. Two years, no child. Three years, no child. What is wrong? There are even to make matters worse. There are times that they go to the hospital, the man is fine. Have you seen people like that? Fine! Nothing is wrong. 
The woman is fine. Three weeks ago, I was, three weeks now, yes, I was counseling and a woman came to me. Very interesting case. This woman was pregnant. Maybe you would say it's about six, seven, but they would go to the scanning machine. Huh? Ladies. And then they'll find out that there's nothing. It's not like there's fibroid or mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. So when you hear me talk like this, some of you just sit down saying, I beg this. No, let me tell you. God has granted us. You can ask the ministers. They will tell you. Counseling opens your eyes to things you will not imagine. Hallelujah. One day after Koinonia, a lady walked up. No, I saw her. And I knew that something was wrong with her. And I called her. I said, what is wrong with you? And she laughed. She didn't want to tell me. And I asked her. I said, what is it? She said, there's something. It's like, it looks like a worm, but a little bigger than the worm in her private part. It's a living thing. No, I'm, I'm being very honest with some of you so that you wake up tonight. We are not playing games here. We are going to pray. How do you explain this now? And the lady was looking. Immediately I looked at her. I saw the spirit. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest. There are some of you, listen. I want to teach you something tonight. 98%. Delay in marriage for some of you is a curse around your family. Pronouncements and projections. Listen, your salvation affects you, not your territory. Are you listening to me? Let me teach you something here. Your salvation does not change your territory. Otherwise, there will not be terrorists in Nigeria. Your salvation does not change your territory. It takes an understanding of God's word and the operation of the anointing to put the devil where he belongs and release yourself from shackles of darkness. There are many people here. There are all kinds of yokes on your life. Please listen to me. There are many of you here. You sleep in the night. Men come to you to have sex in your dreams. They use the face of your father, mother, the face of another woman, the face of animals. You've just been laughing. That, that's, that's, that's a question mark happening there. The church does not deal with these things. We shy away. Many of you here, I tell you, because we come from an African continent. Our children will not need to go through this. But there will be a generation that must pay the price. And it so happens that we are the ones in between. Don't let anybody fool you. America is over 200 years. Some people pay the price and pass the heritage of godliness. My children will not need to go through this. Are you listening to me? But someone is got to go through this. And it so happens that you are the one. So let me announce to you, for some of you who have been trivializing things, you've been confessing God's word. People come, some of, listen, I, I want to deal with some things this night. This is pre-miracle service. There are many of you that have been oppressed. You get up, you are bedwetting. You cannot explain it to anybody. You are not bad. People cannot understand. You need help. But the church will not arise. We will keep giving all kinds of flimsy explanations. Some of you have an unusual urge for sex. You cannot, you love God. But you can't see a man or woman. This is not normal. These are operations of spirits. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, there's been, there's been constant happenings around your family. Everybody that marries, there is a divorce. It, it kept happening. It kept happening. Are you ready to break that cycle or you just want to watch and be saying, oh, don't worry. It won't happen to me. You will be surprised. Because it's already happening to some of you right now. This is why God gives gifts to the body. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something about spirits. Look at me. Some of you do not know that there are territorial spirits. Listen, please. That are, 
are willfully given access over territories. I pray for people for deliverance almost every day. And the demons shout and what they always say is, we have legal access in this body. In the book of Jude, the Bible says, when Archangel Michael came to take the body of Moses, what happened? Satan was there claiming the body too. Satan is still claiming the bodies of people. When a demon leaves a man, the Bible says, it will go through arid regions. Hear me? Seeking for a place of refuge. He said, not finding any. He will say, let me arise and go to my house. He has gone, but he's still calling the man his house. Hallelujah. I was born again. I was a preacher and demons were still oppressing me. Are you listening to me? I confess the word. I read the books you have read. Let me tell you something. I was moving terribly in the anointing, but demons will press me in the night. I will sleep in the night and see them come. My shouting the name of Jesus was as helpless as something was wrong. This is what has been happening to some of you. You have a dream. They are pressing you. They are oppressing you. You can't even shout Jesus. You are about to write a serious paper. The devil just comes. Somebody just sleeps between the dream. That's the end of it. Nothing works again. Don't let anybody deceive you. We will not lie to you in this place. The Bible says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Tonight, whatever has held your destiny will bow. This is the re See, you, this is what many people like MFM and the rest call spirit husband and spirit wife. I know many people say, ah, there's nothing like that. Just shut your mouth. Oh. Shut your mouth quickly. Because you see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The Bible says the things that appear in this realm... That the things that are material were made from the things that are immaterial. There are, there are tribes that covenanted people to people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said right from when you were in your mother's womb. I knew you. I called you. That means spiritual things can happen right from your mother's womb. It's in your Bible. He said while you were in your mother's womb. I called you already to be a prophet. Hallelujah. And there are many innocent believers not getting married, getting barren, giving birth to all kinds of satanic things. Do you know why Satan is frustrating you? Because you or your parents have made a decision to serve the Lord. Do you know, I was telling someone, I cannot remember, with the crude traditional African ways of giving birth, sir, we didn't have difficulty in giving birth. When a woman is giving birth, they will bring fire. And they will even use knives or something to cut the placenta. Yet women were giving birth freely. Do you know why? Because their allegiance was unto Satan. Some of our parents got up and said, look, this is over. And the devil says, you have declared war. This is the mark. And some of you sit down and just laugh. You like a cool, smooth, nice message that just tells you everything is all right. Yes potentially but you need to get up and make it so he says we have seen everything under his feet he said but we do not yet see i'm, I'm sorry he said he was raised made a little lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor he said but we do not see all things under his feet that means all things have not yet come experientially hallelujah there are the bible says blotting out every handwriting what is what was paul seeing when he was saying this what did Paul see? Where did they write the handwritings? There are all kinds of diabolic ordinances against people. Some of you, this is what is responsible for your marital predicament. No man comes around you. Or only married people. Only married people. Don't say the, there is nothing. No. By now you know that mistakes don't happen in the realm of the spirit. The Lord told me to preach this and set people free this night. Are you listening to me? Delay. Delay. Nothing works. A man will come into your life. You will do the introduction. Later he will get up and become a strange man to you. Don't you see what is happening in the realm of the spirit? Many of you are not reading the handwritings on the wall. Counseling is not the solution. The devil needs to experience the power of the kingdom. This is what will put him to flight. He said, how all inspiring are your ways. Through the greatness of thy power. Not through noise. Not through counseling. Will thy enemies submit themselves. 
there are ladies any man that comes into your life this spirit will frustrate the guy and bastardize his life you are a good person there are ladies anytime you enter a relationship with them the guy must die it has happened and they are just giving useless explanations beautiful lady virtuous submissive no guy will ever see you listen some of you once a guy sees you all he wants is to sleep with you no responsible man can see you only touts and arm robbers and drug barons they are the ones who can see you something is wrong is someone hearing me tonight we are going to pray if you came here this is how we are rounding up this series Hallelujah. Some of you would have been married since, but because of this wickedness, the devil laying claims over your marital life and destiny. Every night, some of us cannot sleep. Snakes everywhere, to the point that some of you even see them physically. I've counseled people. One time a lady came inside, uh, we were counseling immediately the lady came inside she just came in what the next thing i saw a snake maybe like twice this just by her side i said my dear what is this that i'm seeing and she said sir this is why i came what is this thing some of you come from royal families ordinances have been made against you let me tell you if you do not rise up in the name of the lord be ready there is trouble the day you gave your life to christ you declared war the devil marked the line and it takes authority to put him where he belongs joe you were with me in mina please stand up he was with me when i went for the crusade in mina what was the rampant case there blindness deafness the women once they give birth they become deaf and dumb ask him he was there the first day of the crusade god moved and mighty things happened the second day of the crusade after the crowd they created a special session for the sick people if you're a man of god you will tell us today they line from one end a large crowd to the other end ask him there were over maybe 60 or so people those days when we didn't have this understanding we'll come and be struggling trying to heal the sick Ah, uh -uh, now we know better i knew that this is about a territory this is about a territory i settled it in my secret place more than 40 of the people i was lifting them from their wheelchairs stand up see once the strong man no man will enter into a man's house and spoil the goods without binding the strong man i give you spiritual knowledge many of you god will set you on fire you need to go back home and say aha now i know the answer this is it this is it no guesswork again this is it hallelujah i barely came to the people just one touch ear open eyes open the mute were speaking now this before it will be a spectacular miracle for me but now i know better there are many of you you are you think dating.com or whatever is the solution let me tell you tonight you are going to humble yourself there are many of you in the you see all kinds of things some of you are christians but there are demonic diabolic ordinances I once prayed for a lady who told me that voices, she hears voices. They tell her the things to do. She was walking one time and this thing ladies like putting on their waist. It was on the ground and the voice said, carry it and put. No man except you are on fire. See brothers, let me tell you, if you are not on fire, I don't know how to help you. You will fall like a leaf. There are many ladies that come for counseling. As soon as they enter, I see the spirit of seduction. And I know that if not because I've, I've declared my stand unto God, you will be surprised. Because they tell me how many pastors, even in this area, that they sleep around with. Men and women who stand on your pulpits and speak nonsense. Hallelujah. 
Tonight I'm angry in my spirit because some destinies will be opened. Some of your parents in a bid to help you when you were sick or something ran to the village. Is that true? Please answer me. Is that true? You were getting admission and they ran. They came and said, okay, please. We want her to pass this. They did it out of innocence because that's all they knew. But let me tell you something. The devil never gives you anything free. Make no mistakes about it. You will collect the goods now and pay for it later on. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? This is the problem with many of you. Your kingdom reigns. His kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all. Lord, your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above every cultural kingdom. Above every ordinance of darkness. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all. Yeah. Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Let me tell you something about the operation of these wicked spirits of darkness. They will not only wreck your marital life, your academics will be shattered. Your personal self will shattered. Sicknesses you cannot account for. This is what many of you are suffering. Please hear me tonight. Don't trivialize what you are listening to. This could be the key that will help you maritally. This could be the key. I tell you, when you dethrone Satan, you will be shocked the way doors will start opening for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Enough is enough. You can't be living like this. Except God has not called us. Except God has not sent us. Part of our mandate is to set the captives free. I'm not a pastor. Our mandate is to set the captives free. There are many of you that you, you, are, you are trusting God for marriage this year. But the way things are going, except God intervenes, it will not work. It will not work. Hallelujah. There are some of you, you are a row of ladies in your house. Nobody has married. A row of people, four, five ladies. Nobody has married. One brother just comes. Two days is not serious. Let me tell you, if this is my wife and Bishop Stan wants to come and collect her, if I'm a responsible man, you think I'll just allow him, what will you do? You will fight unto death. They laid cold over the body of Moses. There are many barrenness issues. Some of your loved ones, they are busy insulting your sister, calling her a witch. And see, listen, I must balance this before we pray. Listen. This is where you need to be careful with prophets. Because this lady, look at me please. Let me teach you something. Listen. This sister here can be affected by a lot of demonic things. From her, She may not even know. As a prophet, I can stand and I can see a demon behind this lady. It does not mean she's a witch. This is demonic oppression. Are you hearing me? I may pray for her. You see people who came for koinonia here. Roll on the floor. They are not witches. Many prophets have caused trouble in the body of Christ. They keep blaming people. A woman comes. Now you come and pray for her. A woman came to me. She came to complain about her husband. They were Actually, a woman brought them, two of them. They were quarreling. The woman was this and that and that and that. And then the husband... Now started calling the woman a witch. That a prophet told him his wife is a witch. He should, he should leave her alone. As I was talking to her, I now saw the spirit. And the woman started manifesting. The man said, you see? You see what I'm saying? Confirmation. Immediately I, I finished. The spirit in him jumped up and wanted to run out. 
He scattered the things there. Scattered my table. When he finished, I said, who now is a witch among two of you? Are you listening to me? Very important. You may not know the things you are dabbling into. And if spiritual knowledge is not given unto you, you will not, the Bible says, through wise counsel, make war. Some of you will be settling things. This is pre-miracle service. I tell you, don't miss next week's miracle service. What God will do in this place will surprise you. If you are coming here and you are not blessed, we are fake. Are you listening to me? If nothing is changing, that means, that means maybe we went to one shrine for something to pour on our head. But I tell you, there is a living God in this place. Are you ready? We are going to pray. Go back, sweetheart. One prayer point and I will begin ministering. Listen. You are going to pray this night. Tonight is not a night of shame. Tonight is the night when you will end some things. Some of you have struggled with pornography, master. You can't help it. This is demonic. You don't conquer demonic things by willpower. Brothers, it takes the anointing. The anointing. There are many of you, you can't keep one relationship. You love a lady, two days later, you don't love her again. You think something is wrong. You go to another lady, two days later, you can't love her again. You, you are married, but you can't see another woman move. Come on, this is demonic. The Bible says, he that conceals his sin shall not prosper. We are going to rise tonight. Everybody rise up. I tell you, the devil, the devil is in trouble. Whatever allowed you to come here tonight is in trouble. Hallelujah. Now we are going to pray. Just for three or four minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, whatever stronghold in my life, whatever, I don't care where it's coming from. Lord, this night, you are going to visit me. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The snakes in your dreams, the men that come to oppress you, these satanic kings. Sekete kete bakata. Sekete Outside, inside. Make sure you are praying. Sepekete leketa. Sembros keplekete kete bakata. Enough is enough. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted. To set the captives free. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. Satan, you are in trouble tonight. Satan, you are in trouble. The strong man against families tying their marital destinies your time is up tonight pray like a priest pray like a priest pray for your family members pray for your loved ones pray for the buried people in your family that barrenness you have come to your end tonight light shine in the darkness one more minute come on pray enough is enough as soon as Zion travels Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it will end. It will end. Bakata Balada. Please be in the mode of prayer. We are serious in this place. If your neighbor is distracting you, tell him, don't distract me. Don't distract me. Don't distract me. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Listen. I'm going to pray for people right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for people. Oh, there will be mass, mass, listen. 
mass emancipation. Some of you who did not know that what is happening to you is demonic, you'll be surprised. Don't forget about your neighbor. Hallelujah. This spirit that comes to oppress you, hear me, whether carrying the face of your brother, your mother, another woman, I don't care. Telling you they are married to you, listen to me. I tell you, I see fire in this place. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray. Whether you fall down or not is, is not the issue. Right now. Believe and expect. There is a lady in that row. I see a spirit manifesting. It's a snake. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. We are going to shout the name Jesus once. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, I want you to shout it with faith. There is noise that will hit the gates of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. There are many of you. Snakes. Snakes. The Bible says, I have given you authority, Luke 10, 19. Over snakes, there is a reason why the Bible calls snakes and scorpions. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray. The power of God will move in a mighty way. Anyone here that has been initiated into any demonic thing, whether you know it or you do not know it, right now, Lord Jesus, let the power of God move. Be it in dreams. Move. I set you free. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Come out of her. Out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of her. The children shall not suffer the iniquity every occult initiation every initiation through sex through dreams that will close the, the doors of your marital life i challenge it i challenge it Hallelujah. Let her go. Come out of her. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. This is a snake. Come out. Come out right now. Out of her. Come out. Go. Go right now. Listen, you are being delivered though. Don't wait till you fall. Something is happening. The presence of God is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Ladies, say after me, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. My body. Look at me. Look at me. Come. Come. Leave her, leave her. Shall the captives be delivered? Let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, do you know for some of you, this is what spilled over into your academics. Many of you may not know. This is why no matter what you do, things don't happen. Don't miss miracle service. Sister, come. This is what you have suffered. Come, you. The lady put in her hand. Come out. Come, it's time for God to help you. No, you, you. The lady with pink, come. Please hurry up, we're out, we're out of time. There's fire burning all over this building. That devil. 
look at me sister you have suffered your academics is not very good this is a spirit you are not lazy look at me look at me hallelujah I set you free it will cough out something now that devil of darkness in the name of Jesus let this girl go free in the name of Jesus now come out come out come out come out see now in the next two to three minutes you are going to pray for your family members that as you're praying don't keep quiet some of you your sisters have suffered if you can invite them here for miracle service invite them if you cannot pray lift your voice say satan enough in my family enough pray pray Satan, I stand representing my family. Get lost, get lost, get lost. I set altars of darkness on fire. Get lost. Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? Outside are you praying? My family comes under divine protection. My family, pray for your sister, pray for your brothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what is happening in many of our homes. This is why daddy is fighting with mommy. Hallelujah. Right now in the next two minutes, I want you to cause, listen, any seed of barrenness, whether in your life, ladies, I want you to pray this. If you need to lay hands on your womb, lay hands on your stomach, do it. Pray for your sisters at home. Pray. I am fruitful. Pray. I am fruitful. No devil. No devil. Please take this prayer seriously. Take this prayer seriously. The Bible says, be fruitful. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. No barrenness. No barrenness. No barrenness. Ladies, pray. No fibroids. No demonic clothes. No fibroids. Guys, pray. Every devil of impotency is cursed. Pray for your family members. Barrenness. Hear the word of the Lord. Barrenness. I don't care how long. I don't care how long. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye. The The power of God is still moving. The power of God is still moving. Let her go. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I want to pray for you. We're out of time. Lift your hands, everybody. 
if it doesn't apply to you what I'm saying, you can connect for your parents or your family members. Any lady here or any woman with any demonic growth called fibroid or any kind of cyst, listen, in the name that is above all names, I curse it right now. I curse it right now. I cut that growth away from your body. I flush it out of your body. I flush it out of your body. Any satanic medical condition, whether your fallopian tube is blocked, you don't have womb, even if you lived a promiscuous life before and you lost a womb, I create a new one right now. When God forgives sins, he forgives the consequences. Hallelujah. I pray whatever has held your marital destiny, that the man that is destined for you cannot come or you cannot get married right now. Be released. Be released. Be released. I release you. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. I command it. Enter your marital destiny. Enter your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Whoever has been tied here in any wrong ordinance, whether it was unknowing, some of you enter relationships, you go and cut yourself, cut the guy, drink your blood, you call it love. This is nonsense. But I want to pray for you now. The Bible says the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Satan, hear my voice. Over the lives of these people, I command right now, take your hands away. Take your hands away. Take your hands away. Lift up your heads. Oh, you gates, be ye lifted. Ancient doors, ancient doors. Every altar of darkness. My Bible says, whatever has not been planted by God will be uprooted. I uproot, I tear down, I set on fire in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lust, Every spirit of lust, please lift your hands and pray for everybody. Every spirit of lust that keeps taking you back into immorality, whether you want it or not, right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. Receive it. Receive freedom against lust. Hallelujah. Anyone here under the curse of habit, lesbianism, homosexuality, look, you must not be just lift your hands. I'm praying for you. Don't say I'm not. Uh -uh. Whether homosexuality, listen, lesbianism, all kinds of things. There are people that sleep with animals. And do. I'm speaking for the sake of the many who will be hearing, not necessarily just you. There are some of you ladies, you have affection for one another. Guys, affection. You think it's normal. This is satanic. Right now in the name of Jesus. I deliver you from this curse. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free. Be free. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for you. Whatever you have lost because of the times of ignorance. Some of you have suffered heartbreaks. Some of you have suffered a lot of things, I pray. There is a God that can restore the years canker worms have eaten. Lift your hands, I want to pray. This is finally. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that for many people between now and miracle service, give them a big miracle. Between now and miracle service, you will testify on Friday upon this altar 
you will testify i release breakthrough breakthrough that will bring restoration you will testify i open doors of favor doors of grace doors of academics i challenge darkness you will sleep like a baby no more fibroid no more growths no more pains no more aches you are free all the spirits that come to torment you you will see them no more you will sleep like a baby forever hallelujah hallelujah you have not given your heart to the lord jesus christ you are in this place listen to me this is the most important thing if you have not given your heart please let them not go sister don't go yet you've not given your heart to the lord you are already in danger hallelujah what an opportunity as we prepare for our great miracle service next week you're here you've never given your heart to the lord or you've given your heart to the lord and you found yourself derailing honestly you've entered ways that are not of god and you want to make it right right now please we, we are limited we just have a minute or two for you inside and outside as the lord speaks to you you've seen what the lord is doing in this place hallelujah the bible says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and i will give you rest leave your seat and come out right now i want to agree with you i want to pray with you appreciate them as they come there are people who have never given their lives to christ or this is their first decision please don't sit back don't wait for somebody else inside and outside quickly keep clapping thank you for coming thank you sister Thank you, sister. God bless you. There are people outside. Don't sit back there. Come and stand here quickly. Keep appreciating them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The Lord is bringing you to change you. I see you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, sir. Appreciate them, Koinonia. It's your sacrifice to bring them to the kingdom. God bless you. Bring all of them here. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother and my sister, for coming. This will be the beginning. Keep coming if you still want to come. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, say it from your heart. Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. The grace of God is at work in my life. From today, I receive the Holy Spirit and God's life.